Okay, we should be live. I'm not sure, if, are we live now? I think we're live now. <laughs> uh, I don't know, YouTube's been telling me all kinds of stuff for this, so I, let me know if it's coming through okay, I guess. YouTube has, has given me mixed reporting uh, on if it's actually coming through smoothly and with the audio. <laughs> so let me know if you can hear us and, and see me and if it's uh, you know, actually like moving because that would be good, <laughs> all right. Cool, so it looks like everyone, everyone can see it. So welcome to the stream. We're gonna be overclocking to 9900K today. I'm looking forward to it. This should be a pretty fun one. I've done, I've done quite a few mods since the review and I'm just now seeing me waving uh, delayed a bit there. So it looks like it's smooth, that's good. All right, so uh, I'll be talking about the CPU momentarily. I'm gonna let some people join in first, stuff like that. And you know, this was a, it's a pretty big launch day for Intel. And I haven't had a chance, I haven't had time to look through and see what commenters online think. I haven't had time to see what, uh, what other reviewers think. So I expect to see some, some chat tonight, what you think about the 9900K, because I need, to get, I need to get caught up. And of course, the only way to do that is to read chat, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So we've got a couple things to talk about with the CPU. I'm just waiting for people to join in so I don't have to say it too many times in a row. And I'll start going over the bench momentarily once we're ready with that. Uh, so as people are joining, no, not Rip J today, I'm sorry. Uh, what we will be doing is just a, uh, just overclocking the CPU, just the 9900K. And I need to see how, I forget how to open up Super Chat from this new interface I've been using for, uh, for YouTube's live streams. We're using the events page now instead of the live streams page. It seems to be a bit more reliable, but also completely unnavigable. Uh, all right, so uh, yeah, it looks like chat, chat's pretty much in line with what I was expecting for, uh, for the, um, the, the take on the 9900K. Okay, so we should be good to, to pretty much start going through everything. Dude, send out the tweet. You know what? I should do that. Let's send out a tweet to everyone we're live before we start really going. So we are live. Okay. Okay. So told everyone. Yes, yes, I got it. I don't know why tweets in all caps with a lot of exclamation, <laughs> exclamation points from some of you. All right. So yeah, um, I'm going to be doing, uh, I don't know, a bit of a chat vote here. Let's, you know, while people are joining in, let's take just kind of a quick tally. Uh, so I'm going to be overclocking just the CPU today. We're not going to focus on the GPU, really. What I want to know is, uh, someone says, I love that shirt. Thank you, Cell Phone Dave. Uh, it's a new limited edition shirt. It's on the store, on store.cameronsaccess.net, if you want to pick it up. Uh, we're figuring out what sizes we need to order. So we've got a, a pre-order period to figure out what sizes to bring in. And then once they're sold out, we'll cut off the orders and, and, and stop making them. So yeah, uh, benches. So we have a few options. Let me pitch like two or three of them. Do you want to see, how much do you want to see uh, Cinebench versus like Time Spy Extreme or Time Spy, I guess, CPU testing? That's what I want to know. So Time Spy CPU test, physics test, Cinebench, Firestrike physics test is another option. Just type, type one of those names in chat. And I'm going to take an ad hoc poll on what it seems like people want to see the most. You can type in, I guess, type in 3D Mark or Cinebench, something like that. Seeing a bit of both right now. Blender. <laughs> We're not going to do Blender. <laughs> Let's sit and watch it render a still image for 15 minutes. It's just exciting. Cinebench is definitely faster. We can do a bit of both. So we can do some. We can do, do a bit of both. Looks like Cinebench is is pretty in demand. Time Spy and Cinebench. It's like equal. So we'll do. We'll do. All right. I got it. <laughs> I got it. We'll do. Uh, we'll do a bit of both. Um, so yeah. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we are, let me walk you through the parts and stuff. I'm going to tweet this out one more time or post it on uh, Facebook or something. And otherwise, we're going to walk through this new CPU, see how high we can overclock. I didn't try super hard for the review. I pushed the 5.2 gigahertz without really any effort and just stopped there and figured we'd do more here today with a 540 millimeter radiator that I'll show you momentarily. So we are live uh, with a 9900K overclock. Stream, I guess. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's uh, let's get going here. 
Chat has now updated me on what the internet thinks about this new processor, so that's always helpful to know. Uh, and at this point, we need to see how far we can push the thing. So um, allow, oh, there we go. Open Super Chat in a new window. Nice. OK, cool. We got $2 from Axios who says, you'll need an egg to cook on the CPU. Yeah, that's we probably get in kind of that temperature sometimes. So let's go through this thing before I turn it on. It's off right now because, as you'll see momentarily, there's a, uh, a very large radiator with a lot of fans on it. And uh, here it is. So this is the EK. It's one of the EK540s they sent in for a RIP-J stream, which we'll get back to after this, probably the next couple of days. We'll, we'll visit that again, maybe about a week. Visit that again. But EK sent this. This was one of ours, either our GPU or our CPU radiator. It was in the ice bucket. And now it's back with just fans. You know, I, I kind of thought for this stream, I want to do something realistic that anybody could build. And that, that seems like it might be something you'd actually try and overclock at home. So I don't want to do an ice bucket. Uh, but then I used a 540 milliliter radiator. So I guess I didn't really stick to that plan too well. This is this kind of just, mis I don't know. It's, it's a bit misleading. This is leftover. I left it on there because we might end up dunking this radiator in a future stream and doing a chilled overclock on the CPU. But it will not be chilled below ambient today. Uh, we're just going to use ambient air for cooling the radiator. And it has four. Furious fans on it, they're called, the Vardar Furious. They're very loud. Uh, I can bring down the speeds later if we need to, but we're going to try and run at full speed, and hopefully it won't bother everyone too much. And then for the loop, it's actually very simple this time. So despite all the stuff on the wood block, the actual loop is just this one. So it's, uh, it's only this pump and reservoir combo hooked up to the supremacy block, I think which is hooked up to the uh, 540. It's a really simple loop for this. And what case does that fit in? I honestly am not sure. I'm not sure what, what case you would fit it in. Um, D-lid and conduct knot. Yes, that's really important. So ambient temperature of the room is uh, 22 right now. So yes, it is D-lidded. It's actually not hard. You can use the existing D-lid tools for uh, for existing CPUs, for 8,000 series, 7,000 series, all that stuff. And uh, we are, yeah, we'll do dry ice eventually, yes. Uh, but I don't know about for this. So it is delitted. And then the, what else we got going on? I lapped the inside of the IHS, so I sanded it down. And that took a long time. So sanded that down last night. Um, and then after that, just kind of put liquid metal on it. And got it working. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's going to be cooler than in our review, where in the review I had just hydronaut on there versus solder, which is a really interesting test, but not what we want to do for this. So, um, yeah, that's that's what we've got going on. We got two more super chats. Uh, Joe Sutinen, two dollars testing one two three four five. Thank you very much. D two and thirty two dollars. Would I need to reinstall Windows 7700K to 9900K? With Windows 10, you can kind of get away with that. I would recommend a clean install for best performance just to make sure there's nothing sneaky in the drivers left behind. Um, I did not lap the die, so I did uh, IHS lapping. And we didn't do the die. I know Roman did that, and I talked to him about that. But we just did the uh, IHS only. So OK, let's turn this thing on. I'm going to apologize now for the noise and <laughs> step back a bit. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to show it, but those fans actually go so fast, they push stuff around in the background. It is, it is uh, they are very fast fans, and there are a lot of them. So um, what motherboard are you using? We are using the Maximus 11. So uh, it is, and we're going to reset BIOS. We're using the Maximus 11 Hero. It's an Asus motherboard. We've got the uh, we've got a half kit of G-Skill Trident Z Black on there. It's the same memory that we used for the Rip J and Rip LTT stuff, but I only put two of them in there. And I have not I haven't done like any overclocking on this, so we're gonna be figuring this out all live. And let's see, other parts RTX 2080 Ti Xe Ultra, but we're not really gonna be using the GPU. And then an AX 1600i. Power supply, which should be set in single rail mode, but we'll find out if I trip any uh, over 
overcurrent protections or anything like that. So let's start simple. I'm going to go ahead and just reset straight defaults with uh, XMP. And let's get our baseline with this. We'll do Cinebench and we'll do uh, like a Time Spy, extreme, or time spy Physics and see how that does. How are you working in the 7980XE? Is this Doctor Who, uh, 867 5309? 867 Is this a 7980XE? No, but thank you for the $2. Uh, got a couple more super chats while this is booting. We got uh, Guido Salducci, $2, but does it crisis? Probably. I don't know. Almost definitely. Bazinga X, $5. What do you think of Enermax was looking at their Neo Changer pump and res combo? I don't know anything about that pump or reservoir or that series at all. Enermax has some, some actually surprisingly good products. They have some surprisingly very bad products like any other company. So it's, I mean, as a whole, I have no opinion of just straight Enermax. Um, but uh, they, they definitely have some stuff that has uh, has performed better than we expected. And then it found, we found out it was corroding, so that was unfortunate. All right, let's just launch Cinebench. And I've got, like, I've got stuff going in the background. It's not gonna be a perfect score, but let's just get a baseline today. You know, we should um, blast the brightness on this monitor and probably wipe it off, too. Let me do that while we get this started. Where are the buttons for this monitor? Uh, I hate navigating monitors. Brightness. Oh. oh, nope, don't want that. Oh, it's got a navigational button. It's nice. Okay, cool. Brightness, 100. Okay, that's not what I want. That's, that's good, I guess. Uh, let me wipe that down, too. But can you see it okay, Andrew, or no? Yeah, it's good. Okay. So we're just going to wipe that down. We normally don't use this screen for streaming. So it's running Cinebench single-threaded just for a baseline. I'll get a hardware info running in a second, and we'll take some, some numbers for thermals. And actually, I should use a different type of cleaner than this. And uh, the good news about the single-threaded test is it takes a long time, so I can walk around for a second and clean this off. So this will be baseline. All I've done is XMP, and that's pretty much it. Just XMP on the... Uh, on the memory, which is 3600 megahertz to be fair. This is a riveting stream. Guess we don't need my test data notes anymore since those are all done now. So this is our live stream of cleaning a monitor. Welcome. Uh, we're actually venturing into lifestyle videos now. We've noticed that those do way better, get a wider audience, and uh, can offer useful tips like like to clean your monitor, you can use a paper towel. I think that's pretty new. <laughs> All right, there we go. It's a bit better. How's, does that look okay on sc screen? All right, cool. Okay, so let me check out chat. Is this the 9900? It is the 9900K. And no vacuum. Nope, no vacuum. We don't need a vacuum to clean a monitor. <laughs> All right. So, uh, I did not break it yet. It's just running complete stock right now. We're not going to do many of these. I'm only going to do single core tests, like when we hit a really stable clock. Uh, so we're going to take a note of this when it's done, and that'll be our single core baseline. And then uh, after that, we can do multi-threaded and a physics test. So right now it's complete stock with XMP on, 3600 megahertz for that. This is going to be a different kit of memory than we used for our, uh, for our review. So if you saw the review, we used the 3200 megahertz kit there. And it looks like chat's filling in pretty well. So welcome to everybody who's just joining in now. I'll walk you through the parts again in a second since you missed, probably a lot of you missed the beginning. But basics here, uh, the 9900K came out. I, from what I've seen in chat, it's pretty much expected. Really expensive, but high performance. It's just a question of is it worth it. And then we delitted ours, did liquid metal on it. We talked about uh, delitting it in our review, but didn't show the liquid metal application, and it actually worked out pretty well. So our baseline here, 219 for single. So 219, uh, 1T, and that is with complete stock. 
I'm gonna take notes, stream notes, 9900K OC. I'm gonna get to the super chats in a minute. Uh, also, as a note, if you pick up the uh, anything from the store today, especially these new foil graph logo shirts, these are going to be limited edition shirts. Like uh, the last one sold out within about two weeks, I think. And we had like a couple left over after that, but uh, that was it. So once, once they're gone, we're not making any more. They'll be gone. They're very, they were very popular last time. Expect them to be this time as well. But if you pick something up on the store, store.cameronsnexus.net, I will be sure to try and shout out as many as I can, but no promises uh, due to high volume. I can't always get all of them. So, uh, all right, so 219 is our single core score. Let's do a multi-threaded baseline. No overclocking just yet and see how that does. How do you clean off the solder? Great question. And I'll get some of the super chats in a second too. I saw that was just a normal chat though. So great question. How do you clean off solder? Uh, <laughs> you use a knife. So you, um, there's some footage of it in our review. But so to crack it open, you can use any delitter, just like with the eight, the previous two generations, you can say, use the same delitters. So you can use their bowers, you can use rocket cools if you want a cheaper option. That's what I used. And uh, it'll just crack it open, just like thermal paste. I'm not advising you do this, mind you. Uh, it's, it's actually, it's good enough with solder that I would really recommend against the delitting, unless you absolutely need the last couple of degrees for whatever competitive overclocking you're doing. So I would not advise it. But just for sake of curiosity, if you want to know how it's opened, you put it in a delitter, you turn the screw, and it cracks it open. And then uh, scrape off all the silicone adhesive just like normally. The solders are a really soft solder, so it's indium and it's very soft. You can scrape it off even just with your fingernail, but I used a, a razor blade. So I used a, a short like box cutter razor blade that I cut in half and that was able to get in there and scrape most of it up. And then the problem is it's hard to get it to be a properly smooth surface. And if you slip with that razor blade, when I was talking with Roman, Der Bauer, we were talking about this. If you slip with that blade, that CPU might be dead. So I uh, really have to be careful and it's, um, it's, it's definitely not something I necessarily recommend for almost anyone, but it was fun uh, and also a huge pain because to really get the IHS to where it needs to be, you kind of have to sand it. So I sanded it with uh, 600 grit, 1200, 2000, 2000 wet sand, 3000. So it's really shiny on that side of the IHS. Um, and we can do a bit more, but anyway, so our baseline here, 2064. For baseline, that's within reason. I think we were seeing like 2018 in our, some of our other validation runs. So just depending on this memory is faster, so that makes sense. So 2064 NT complete stock. Okay. So are you going to file down the die? No. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I might sand off a little bit to smooth out the top because it is kind of uneven right now and that bothers me, but I'm, I'm not really planning on doing anything serious with the die. I know Roman worked on that. And uh, I think that's on his channel if you want to check it out. But so we're just going to restart and do some actual overclock stepping here. Probably just start with a five gigahertz all core. It's pretty easy. It'll definitely hold. Doesn't really take any effort. And then we can get a good baseline for what happens when it's all core five gigahertz. Because that's something that you can almost certainly achieve on, I would think, all of these. I would certainly hope all of these out of the box would do 5.0 all core. So that'll be a good comparison. Then we can do uh, 5.1 for some numbers there. 5.2 I know is stable. And 5.2 beyond beyond that, I'm not sure what happens. So we'll we'll find that out together. All right. So we have uh, let's let's just start going through the options here. I'm gonna try and read some super chats when I can. So AVX definitely zero offset for AVX. Sync all cores. We're gonna do a 50 x multiplier or five gigahertz for now, and that'll be our starting all core. You've got a bit of glare up here. <clears throat> and uh, yep, it's that one. Cool. Uh, and then, so let's see, what else do I need to turn off here? I need to turn some stuff on, some stuff off. We need to disable SVID support, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go to, not touching the timings right now, uh, DigiPlus power, that's good. So load line calibration, we're going to set to level 7. That's pretty much a straight line, although on this CPU we do have some vDroop even at level 8 LLC, so I'm going to have to increase the voltage input more than what I actually want, which makes it kind of hard to track. Uh, current capabilities, we're gonna hit that. So this is a really important setting. If you don't know much about overclocking, if you try to go into, at least on this board, a BIOS and overclock this CPU like I just did, and you don't set the current 
limitations to max, or at least higher, then it will current throttle. And so you actually won't get the overclock that you wanted. Um, going to disable spread spectrum. And then DRAM current, we're going to max that out as well. Don't expect the DRAM to be going over current, but might as well uh, just eliminate any issues for us early. And there's one more setting, I think. ICC max is important. So max that one out. Actually, there should be a couple more too. Um, so one of the problems in, in the review that we brought up, so this was in the article but not in the video, got cut from the video due to time, but some boards out there are, uh, are actually running with an ICC max that's higher than Intel stock specification, and so those scores will be higher than, than what is considered stock. It's kind of like an MCE debate all over again. I talk about this in the review within the first couple paragraphs, so check out the review article if you want to read about that. It was in the video, but we caught it for time. Uh, let's just, I don't know what's, like, I don't know. Let's, let's do like 1.28 and then just step it down. I'm actually not sure. Kind of curious what the lowest stable voltage will be for this. Probably need to max out the fans too. So let me get some super chats while this is booting back in. Uh, okay, super chats. So we have... Uh, ATO Kithi At Ata Kithi said two dollars. Thank you very much. Stream looks nice. Please share encoder settings. It's just OBS with uh, probably faster. I think. I think it's just H.264 faster. So all I'm, all I'm doing right now is maxing out the fans. If the fan noise is completely unbearable, let me know. But we're gonna try and I I'll just try and stay away from them. Um, that way it's not too loud. But we do need the cooling capability. That's kind of the point of an overclocking live stream. So, all right, there we go. So, Super Chats, uh, we have Mustangs by Matt, $2, good to see you again. Is that a PCO11 dynamic in the corner planned? Yes, it is a PCO11 dynamic, and I'm planning to use it for my production machine in the office here, so uh, eventually I'll, I'll be building my own system. We have ones for the editors now, Patrick's got one, so I just need my own uh, production machine at this point. I plan to use that one. Doctor Who, 8675309, $2. Is this a 7980XE? Got that one already? No. Uh, Toys are for boys, 666. Thank you. Let there be no evil in your CPU. Not sure donating 666 is going to help, but I appreciate your, uh, <laughs> your reverse psychology. Hopefully the CPU falls for it. And, that the, and there is no evil in it today. So 5 gigahertz. Uh, pretty basic here. I'm going to move this over... You know, we should probably just go to, let's go to 1080p, make it a bit easier to see. And we got some more numbers in. I don't even know if this is going to be stable. I'm at only 1.28 volts input, but the actual voltage is going to droop from that, I think. So let's take a look at that and just see what's, what's happening in that department. So what we care about is V-Core. Is this motherboard? Yeah, it's, this is detected at the motherboard. So we're at 1.27 currently. Let's see if it even if it just freezes instantly or not. It shouldn't, but we'll see. So we dropped to 1.23. That's kind of what I'm talking about. I need to take a DMM to the back of the socket here and validate. But 1.27 gets me 1.23, something like that. 1.28 actually is what I put in. Uh, so this is something we talked to Asus about. They're aware of vDroop on the board, and um, I, I don't know if they're they plan to do anything with it or if it's just an ICC whatever Intel thing. 2153 is our score for all core 5 gigahertz. And our original all core baseline was 2064. Was that 2153? 2153 is the baseline there. NT 5.0 all core. Okay. And let's just tell it to run. We already actually don't need to run single threaded because we already know what that's going to score. It's going to score the same because uh, it's single threaded. So let's just go ahead and do a 3D mark run while I'm catching up through some of the super chats. And, you know, not extreme. Let's just do straight time spy. Not extreme. Do I have time spy on here? Yes. The giant one. Time spy, CPU, physics only, run custom. All right. It's going to be a bit lower because I'm running hardware info at the same time. But uh, we do need that data, so it's important to have it. And let me read to see if there are any store purchases to shout out while time spy is running here. And then we'll go through the test bench a bit more in a minute. So a couple of store orders. Thank you for sending those in. Uh, we have Eric from Cleveland, Tennessee. 
picked up the new limited edition foil graph logo shirt. That's this one. Thank you for picking that up, Eric. You are one of the first. Uh, and you also got some of the cobalt blue beer glasses. Thank, thank you for picking those up. Helps us with the stream a lot uh, to place orders on the store because it's a different, completely different type of content to produce compared to what we normally do. So it always helps to get those. And uh, Nicholas from North Carolina picked up a, also the limited edition Graph logo shirt. Thank you, Nicholas. So we got a score in. Let me read one more, one or two more of these. We got uh, Karen from Baltimore picked up the limited edition shirt as well. Thank you. And one more here, and we'll get back to those. And we got, uh, here it is. We got uh, Jesus from California picked up a limited edition shirt as well. Okay, so our score, 11,833. Let's just take this as a, a number for uh, all core 5 gigahertz. We'll get a baseline later. So let me just separate this out. 5G all core. And this was 11,833. So um, strictly for perspective, let, let me open up a 3 Mark Hall of Fame scoreboard and look at what these straight times by CPU results are kind of at the high end. Just to give everyone perspective of where this is falling. So time spy, we want time spy CPU score is what I want. Time spy CPU. Do they not space it out? Okay. Well, anyway, time spy graphic score, I see. CPU score is not separated out for time spy standalone, but it is for time spy extreme. Which, of course, uh, I'm fam very familiar with that benchmark. So anyway, let's just look at our Time Spy Extreme number for a second. That was 12,433, and I think if we run this Time Spy Extreme, we're going we're gonna to get hit too hard on the GPU side. So uh, not a good comparison. Let me go back to Time Spy, and then we'll just pick the number. Let's pick the number 20 result. That's with a 60, no, 7980XE. Here's a good 7980XE result with just straight times by 14,378 for that score. And this person was running at an unspecified frequency, I think, 4.7 gigahertz. So they were at 4.7 gigahertz on the 7980XE. And same benchmark, they got uh, 14,378. Now, I don't know how good that person's overclock is. Uh, this is the 19th result in the scoreboard. But we're at 11,833, just baseline. And it is and eight core this time. Kind of have to remember that. So uh, certainly better than Intel's previous processors for this type of thing. Let's see, how are the temperatures during all that? We didn't do a whole lot yet. So we were maxing at, in the 60s. We're doing pretty well, pretty well for temperatures. Uh, part of this is the D-Lid with liquid metal. It brings us down a couple degrees for sure. And we'll have more content on that later. And part of it is a 540 millimeter radiator with four really high RPM fans on it and also an open loop. Uh, so we're doing okay for thermals. Let's see, let's just get a number for, fifth, for uh, 51, 51X. And in the meantime, we got a couple more Super Chats and I need, I need to catch up. So I, I always get through all of them. Uh, just be advised that I run on a delay with the Super Chats because of the volume of them. So we have Dtune30, $2. Why does Infinity Fabric tick at RAM speed? I don't have an answer for that. Uh, that's something I probably used to know when we reviewed Ryzen 1000 series when it came out, and it might be in our review, I don't remember, but uh, not something I've kept in my head. So sorry that I can't answer that right now. Um, I'd, have to, I'd have to look it up. I don't memorize everything that we work on, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, Deathcom, oh, it scrolled up. There we go. Uh, Deathcom SQK. 199. I pre-ordered the 9900K on day one, and Newegg hasn't shipped. That's messed up. Come on, Newegg. Uh, that's pretty messed up. All right, so it's just set 51, and we're just going to keep it at 1.28 until it crashes, which is really like 1.235, which is really low. So it's doing pretty well for uh, for the volt frequency curve, I would say. What did um? So for everyone who watched. Roman, De Bauer's stream. What did he end up? Did he test with uh, exotic cooling or did he use like a liquid cooler? And what did he end up hitting? Just curious. Not trying to compete with him, but curious what he got on the high end. So if anyone knows, it would be Roman. Someone saying Amazon hasn't shipped yet either. Someone says, Steve, overclock more. This isn't crashing, so try more voltage and higher frequency. No! 
No, you don't do more voltage if it's not crashing. You do higher frequency, yes. I'm starting, the, the point is starting slow and working our way up. Uh, don't do more voltage if it's not crashing. That is the, the opposite of the point. Okay, so <laughs> uh, despite starting low, I actually do, do kind of know what I'm doing here. Um, so we hit 5.2 in our review, all core, trivially, and that's why we're back here to actually try this time. So let's get a all core, what is, did we even, did I increase it to 51? I think I did, check in a second. So what are they saying, what are you all saying about uh, Romans? He did 7.6 or 7.7 .7 gigahertz on helium, was it liquid helium? He did use liquid helium, that's pretty cool. I'll have to watch that. Did he do any overclocking on, uh, on ambient? Like just on water cooling with air? I'd be curious what he hit on that uh, high end there. Seven point, I'm hearing 7.5 to 7.7 .7 liquid helium. That is pretty, pretty damn high. Liquid helium is super expensive, by the way, compared to liquid nitrogen. 2212, so is that, uh, that is a bit higher. So this is going to be 5.1 gigahertz all core. And we got 2212 for multi-threaded. And then uh, let's just go ahead and let it do a single thread just to see. It shouldn't be too much higher. We're at 219 before. I, I really don't think it'd be too much higher. It loves three volts, trust me. I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> Definitely does not love three volts. 4.8 on ambient. 4.8, that can't be right. The DH15? I guess the, what was he using for his software, I guess. If he was using Prime, then yeah. So there's a... Prime is really nasty on these 9900Ks. It, it just instantly overheats. Like instantly, even at 5.0 sometimes. So Prime's uh, pretty abusive on these. And Blender is an AVX workload, but it didn't trigger the same response, which is why we use Blender in our thermal testing, because it's still a, a realistic use case, and it wasn't instantly thermal throttling it. Okay. So... Uh, super chats. I get a couple of those. Definitely Relin, five dollars. Would you like some 3DFX cards for the Hall of Rip? Two Voodoo call cards and another. I don't know. Uh, hold on to them for now because we're gonna do another fan mail stream. I don't know. I'm hoping maybe next week, and we need to see what we even have first because there's a lot of stuff in there. So definitely 3DFX uh, Voodoo's are are cool to have though, but. If you want them, you should hang on to them because it's like a piece of history at this point. Kevsky, 802, $2. Liquid metal to soften solder to remove from dye. Liquid metal to soften solder to remove from dye. Um, so, oh, I, I don't know. Would that work? I'm not actually not sure. You'd have to talk to the, mat the materials engineer, Roman, about that. But... Um, all I did was just scrape it off with a knife, so I guess I'm barbaric. I don't know. It seems seemed to work pretty well to me. Uh, Michael Hayes, $10. Would you recommend going from an 8700K to the 9900K? And should I use my ASRock Z370 Extreme 4 motherboard? I'm going to say probably no, but let me look at what that motherboard is. I've not kept up with the uh, Z370 boards. Uh, I am not sure how the power delivery is on this board for the 9900K. I would have to look into it. If Buildzoid's done one on this, that would be a good place to look. But um, for reference, the 9900K, we were pushing like 270 watts with a five gigahertz, uh, 1.35 volt setup. And the reason for that was to equate it to an 8086K. So we used really high voltage, but 270 watts, kind of a lot of power. So you keep that in mind. Uh, it is certainly higher than the 8700K at the high end. Like once you start pushing 5.2 gigahertz, but out of the box, the power delivery should be fine if you're running stock. It's just when you start overclocking like all core 5.2, um, I don't know how, how all the different board VRMs will hold up. I haven't looked into them. L4R5 man, uh, NOK50, thank you very much. Should I use isopropanol to clean my monitor or bleach? Uh, could you, I don't know, you might as well just use a mallet at that point, I guess. <laughs> 225, so 5.1 gigahertz. Got us a single core of 225, just for reference here. So that's 5.1 gigahertz versus 219 previously. Let's go ahead and 
uh, get in. Did we already get our? We did not get our time spy numbers yet for this pass. So let's get a time spy number in and see how that scores. I'm not going to do extreme because it will become GPU bound almost instantly. So people are talking about temperatures, about overheating. We didn't really have too much overheating issues on the X62, which is what we use for everything. It is a hot CPU, but uh, it was not until I was doing like Prime that it was really uh, genuinely overheating constantly. And that is Im an important scenario to consider, but it's not something that, um, that we really needed too much to worry about because we were focusing on blender tests for our comparisons of solder versus paste when we did that in the review. And you should check that out if you haven't seen the review yet. All right. So this is going to run a baseline here. Let's go through the, uh, the components for those who, uh, who missed the beginning of the stream. That's going to be very loud. The fans are kind of crazy. I'll head over, head over there and you can see it. So, uh, has Bill Zoid done anything to help out this evening? No, actually, I haven't worked with him on this one. Other than the Z390 godlike thing he looked at. This air is absurd. So like, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but this piece of foam with all the screws on it is moving around from the, from the fans. Uh, there you go. It's basically invisible. And then this thing, this GN logo back here is moving from the fans. <laughs> Just like spinning on its own. So they're very loud. Uh, let, me, let me walk you through the parts. First of all, this is uh, Patrick's in the room, so I have to call out Patrick's suspension bridge engineering. Um, does Patrick ever take any, any uh, civil engineering classes in school? I played those flash games. Oh yeah, Patrick says he played those flash games where you build a bridge, so I think he's the most qualified to do this. So this is a giant zip tie tied to uh, a rod holding a 540 radiator that's very heavy because we put water in it, obviously. So that's our, that's our suspension engineering. What fans are on it? We have EK Vardars on there. EK Vardar Furious, excuse me, very big difference. Sorry about the fan noise. Kind of blows, blows my hair out. Uh, so Vardar Furious for the fans. There are four of these. And then we have some uh, pump reservoir combo from EK down here. And we're not using this, we're not using the dual DDC pump, we're not using those today. We're only using this one. And the board is a Maximus 11 Hero. I don't know how bad this VRM gets. I might want to put a fan on there, but it actually feels pretty okay right now. So that's cool. Um, it's also not doing a lot right now. EK Supremacy Evo, whatever that block's called. Uh, G-Skill Trident Z Black, 3600 megahertz right now. It's roughly, I don't know if it's 16, 18, 18 or something. We'll look at the timings later. Uh, power supply is an AX1600i, RTX 2080 Ti. I think that covers it. I can throw a, you know, I'm gonna throw a current clamp on here and we can have some fun with seeing what kind of current draw is there while we're running these tests. So let me grab that. Oh, thank you. So it's pretty simple. This is a current clamp. I'm gonna zero it out. That's like absurd. Uh, this is scare, this kind of scare me. So the reason I have these cables hooked up, these ugly extensions, is because despite people saying things like ketchup and mustard cables, these are the best cables to use. <laughs> so you can actually see which ones you need to clamp very easily. And we have this pinout on our mod mat, so it does, uh, it does show where they are, but same place every time, it's standardized. The yellow is 12 volt. This runs nearest the, um, the like clip on the power header. So that's gonna be where that is. Let me see if I can get this like kind of visible to camera maybe without hitting a button somewhere. I don't know if I can get this visible to camera or not. I can open it up on a phone if not though. All right, so not really. Is there a way I can clamp this? I'm just gonna put it there. And then if we have to, we can roll in closer. So um, let me run another test after I log this data. So for that run, 12,021 points. And 
that is at 5.1 gigahertz. We can, of course, go higher. And that was with just straight times by physics. And then we had a 2153 previously. So we've definitely gone up. Uh, and uh, we'll look at the power, the, the current clamp in a minute, and look at the power consumption. That should be pretty fun. Let me, no ice bucket and salt. Not today, just a 540. Uh, so, all right, let's, let's go through some more of these super chats. Got a lot of them. So like I said, I run on a delay with the super chats. I do get to them all, but because of the volume, I'm always a bit behind. So first one is from uh, Shelby uh, Boost, $5. Would the ASUS Maximus formula, water-cooled VRM, be better for overclocking? So from a VRM standpoint, it's very good. Uh, as far as just looking at the, the water-cooled part of it, those VRMs, once they're that good, you can just blast them with air, and they'll be fine. So uh, water cooling the VRM is really nice from the standpoint of you put it in a system and use it properly, not like this, in other words. Then it's much easier to make sure the VRM is cool. You don't really have to worry about anything. But for purposes of like what we're doing here, you just put a fan over top of a VRM without a heat sink on it, and you'll be fine. Uh, the other problem with, so if it's, a, if it's a mono block or if it shares the same loop, then you can run into a problem where you're sharing all this heat from the VRM and if it's like before the CPU, that's going to heat your liquid temperature before it hits the CPU. And that'll drive up the CPU temperatures as a result because it's not getting as cold of a cooling medium going through it. And the VRMs can take 125C+. plus, So second in the loop makes more sense for those uh, since they're going to be fine with uh, warmer water from the CPU. Anyway, that was our score. So what do we want to do next? I guess let's do a... Uh, so let's wheel the camera back over and look, see if you can look at the current clamp. And we're going to try and show the power consumption during just a time spy pass that is stable. So we're going to try and show the current clamp here. And what you'll be looking at is the amperage. So give us a second. We're just moving the camera over. And uh, that is hooked up to the EPS 12 volt cables. So not super visible. Maybe I can I can manipulate it if I have to. Focus. Got to focus on it. There it goes. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's kind of legible. Two point one. Yes, that is somewhat legible. Let's uh, let's let me run it. I'm gonna click run, and you should be able to see what's going on. There we go. That looks better. Uh, it's part of the numbers cut off, but I can move it around. So this is going to show the current. Are these both going the same direction? Yes. So this is showing current. Basically multiply that number by about 12, and that gives you watts. Uh, it's not really doing anything right now. I think it's launching the benchmark, so it's, it's not pulling any power. Oh, no, it's running. There it goes. So we're 8, 9, 10, 12. So I'm seeing 12 uh, amps. Let me just do that math quickly here. 13.2. So that's OK. Let's just call it a peak of 13.3 that I've seen so far. That puts us at about 160 watts, really not that high compared to what we know it can, uh, it can push. But that gives you an idea. And I, I see there are Super Chats. I'll get to them. I'll also get to some more of the store orders. Um, so yeah, that's uh, about 160 watts for that so far. Let's do, I'm going to run another one. So that was Time Spy. I want to run Cinebench in all core just to give you an idea of how the power consumption might differ between the two. So here is Cinebench all core. And this one's pushing about 15.8 maybe from what I can see from here anyway. And that's 190 watts. So that's definitely getting up there. Uh, this is before the VRM. So this does account for VRM uh, or, uh, power a bit as well. So someone says 95 watt TDP as if they're making fun of it. So first of all, we're overclocked, and I've overvolted it. So yeah, of course, 95 watt TDP doesn't apply. That's not even a good, a good jab at Intel. Uh, secondly, this motherboard, as we discussed in the review, th so this board is one of the few that actually does stick to Intel spec. So ICC Max, it stays pretty close to 100 watts, and it'll lock there when uh, it wants more power. It'll still lock there on this board unless you manually override it. Whereas some of the MSI and Gigabyte boards have that same kind of MCE debate going on. I'm going to run another one. Let, let me run single threaded while I'm talking just so you see that power consumption. Uh, so those will 
um, will end up drawing more than than the ASUS board does, and they also hold a bit higher wattage and or sorry, a bit higher clocks uh, as a result of being allowed to pull more power. So anyway, uh, this is just single thread in Cinebench, just to give you an idea of what one thread pulls at this frequency and, and voltage. This is not a part of the review. Check the review for that, obviously. Uh, but that's about 36 watts. So anyway, let's, uh, let me launch one more. I don't know if Prime's going to be stable, but I will launch it just to illustrate a point here. So let's pull up Prime 95. I'm just going to use what's already on here. We have a non-AVX and we have an AVX version. Let's use AVX. It's going to be very abusive. Might crash. We'll see. Now I'm going to run small FFT. Actually, you know, I'm going to do a custom run, and we're just going to do 8 by 8 for the FFT size. It's extremely abusive. It's probably going to overheat. Um, but let me get up uh, hardware info as well and keep an eye on that current clamp when I hit start here. So if it doesn't crash, we can see what the power consumption is. So reminder, we're at 5.1 G and start. Might crash, might overheat. We haven't done either yet. What's our power? So this is 23 amps, just to give you an idea. Uh, compared to the previous numbers, that is quite high. That's 276 watts. So nothing's changed here. Uh, someone says move camera. I mean, it's pointed at a current clamp. Look at the, <laughs> look at the number on the clamp. Um, so yes, this is, is extremely different from the, um, uh, from the Cinebench and TimeSpy results, which is why this particular workload is very abusive. And we're at... Let's see. We're at about 70 degrees. So let's bring the camera back over now that we've gotten that. Uh, we're at about 70 degrees for the temperatures. And we're going to show the screen now that you've seen the current clamp. So that gives you a pretty good idea for why Prime is, is just so rough on these chips. Uh, very good thermal stressor. But we've been using Blender a lot recently because it's realistic. It's AVX. And just like Prime is AVX, but it's, it's not quite as bad. All right. So here's the uh, Prime is still running back here. Are we on all cores still? Is, have any of them? It looks like we dropped one thread. So it's not stable, which is expected. Oh, actually, uh, that one th seems to think we've dropped two threads. There we go. Yeah, we're dropping a few threads at this point. But uh, the other, the threads that stayed alive are in the 70s. So we're pretty good for thermals right now, which is largely thanks to that massive radiator. So, okay, enough of that. Let's push this higher. We don't need uh, too much voltage today for these benches so far, but we will get there. Okay. Will there be another overclocking battle for this chip? I don't know. We're definitely going to do one for the 9980XE, assuming any of us get it. Um, and I still need to follow up with our 7980XE and put it under dice, put it under dry ice. No, the CPU is not using 23 amps single core. That was, that was, that was Prime 95 across all cores. Of course it wasn't single core. It was using 36 watts single core. It's using like 3 amps. <laughs> okay, so what would the temps be like on the stock cooler, though? Well, seeing as there is no stock cooler, I would say quite high. Uh, <laughs> so let's just do 52. I know that was stable before. I am not going to change the voltage, and it's going to crash, but I'm curious. So it's at 1.28. Let's just see what that does. While that's booting back up, uh, <sighs> you should have had PT on for an overclocking collab. All right, well, we got a couple super chats, a couple store orders. So we had some store orders. As I said before, uh, one of the best ways to support us during these live streams is to buy from the store on store.gamersaccess.net. Super chats, of course, we also read and are also very appreciated. The store, though, is, is uh, one of the best ways to help us out if you do want to support what we do. So Michael from California picked up the, the brand new foil graph logo shirt, this one right here, that is limited edition. We're going to put them out for until quantity goes through. We're just putting them up on pre-order now to figure out what the size allocation is for everyone so that we can allocate our quantity to those sizes appropriately. Uh, and then once they sell out, they're gone, just like the previous one, which is back there in the middle. So that one sold out within about two weeks last time. Uh, maybe 
two and a half, something like that. Sold out way faster than we thought. But if you want one, it's on store.cameraxis.net. And uh, no promises, but I will try to shout out the names of people who buy them as they come in. We're, we're very happy with this new Graph Logo foil shirt. It looks pretty damn cool. Very reflective. Next one is from uh, Ashton from Washington, who also picked up the new limited Graph Logo shirt. Thank you, Ashton. We got one from Evan in Alabama, picked up the same shirt. Thank you, Evan, for the foil Graph Logo shirt uh, pickup. And we got Andrew from Ontario in Canada, picked up one as well. I'm going to go through a couple more here. We had one from uh, Stephen in Australia, going a long way for that one. Uh, so we've got picked up the Graph logo foil shirt as well. Two more to read through here. Christos from New York picked up one of the mod mats, autographed. Thank you, Christos. And we'll get those out shortly. I might have to go sign some more soon. Ian from Pennsylvania picked up the foil shirt. I have actually, uh, yep, there's one more here. Marco from Zurich and Switzerland picked up the limited graph sh shirt as well. Last one, uh, Corey from Alabama picked up the GN Award Crystal and one of our Teal Logo anniversary shirts. Thank you very much for those orders. So here we go, we're at 5.2 now. I've not changed the voltage. It is still low and we're just gonna watch it crash, I think is probably what's gonna happen. Uh, so let's, let's, see it. let's see what happens to it here. Is it going to insta-crash? Or is it going to take a minute? Voltage is pretty low right now. Although it might be enough. I haven't really tested the low end of this. I was just doing the quick and dirty overclock and get it done and make sure it, it's alive for the test. Super chat from uh, Daniel Rosniak, $2. How do you think the 9800X will line up against this? I'm not sure. Um, extra memory channels should be interesting for some things. 2265 did not crash, but that's a sh pretty short test. So let's let me create a line item for this 5.2G all core. 2265. Previously we we're at 2212 for 5.1, and let's go ahead and just get some scaling in here so we can plot it pretty nicely. We'll run a single core uh, just to see how it increases over, uh, you know, 100 megahertz at a time. What the increases are. We had another super chat from New Age Culture, $10. Hey Steve, parting a PC right now and wanting a smooth running streaming gaming PC, thinking about the D390 with an 8700K with an FTW3 1080 Ti. Would that do or should I wait for the 9900K price? Isn't a factor for me. So first of all, the 1080 Ti, I agree with as a purchasing choice. Uh, if they're still about the same price as 2080s, I haven't looked in, a, in about a week, but I definitely agree with the decision to go with the 1080 Ti because the, the value proposition there is just so much better than RTX right now. So you're good there. Z390 with an 8700K, I feel like it's kind of overkill. And you could say, but I want to upgrade later. But if that's what you're saying, then I, then I think you're doing it wrong. Because if your plan is buy Z390 now with an 8000 series CPU and then buy a 9000 series CPU, which just came out later, kind of wasting money. So I'd say either get Z370 with your 8000 series or get Z390 with a 9000 series um, to answer that motherboard aspect. As for streaming and gaming, we have, uh, this may interest you, we have streaming benchmarks in our review of the 9900K that went up today. We have a, a huge video section on it that has side-by-side -side playback of Fortnite and Dota 2, just as some basic games everyone pretty much watches at this point, and tested the 2700X versus the 9900K, both stock, to see how they did. A and just to give you an idea, this stream is playing back to you, I think, with H.264 faster, and the quality's pretty damn good. So faster will run on any of those CPUs. It'll run on 2700X just fine. You could save a lot of money by going with that route. The 9900K is absolutely superior in a technical sense, insofar as its numbers are higher where they need to be higher and lower where they need to be lower most of the time for those streaming benchmarks. Uh, power consumption, thermal is not really a part of the consideration here. We're just talking about the FPS and the frame encoding throughput. So yes, it's better. The question is, does that, d does that betterness actually get you anything? Do you care? Because the 2700X can deliver objectively the same experience to the viewer at similar encoding levels, assuming you're below medium. So if you're at like fast or faster, which are both completely acceptable quality uh, levels, 
you're fine on a 2700X, you're fine on an 8700K, uh, which you've parted out here. If you wanted to stick with Intel on that gen for some reason, it's fine. Uh, if you want to go medium or up, then you're looking at either HEDT, 9900K does medium pretty damn well. Um, or you could start overclocking things, uh, or you could get a secondary system. So uh, we got a result back here. 229, last thing I'm going to say on that question, though, because it is a good one, is if you are, uh, what we've learned from our streaming tests is um, you do drop some of the frame time consistency a bit as you start streaming. So there's some concern over, um, uh, over your low end frame time performance falling off as you start streaming on the same host system. And to resolve that, you basically need an external system. So if you're like hyper competitive CSGO player and you need every frame you can get, you probably want a secondary system instead. But for the most part, the, uh, the CPU these days can handle both just fine. And VNC has been updated as well, though I haven't tested it yet. OK, so that's going to run Time Spy, get us a baseline there. Still haven't crashed. I need to check um, hardware info on the next run. I'm, I didn't turn it on for this one because I don't want it to contaminate the results. I'll turn it on for the next run and see if we're hitting any kind of issues thermally or otherwise. Next question is from Adam Schumann. $2, no live notification. Sorry, uh, YouTube does funny things lately. Uh, and it scrolled down. Next one, Eric Hebert, $10. Pre-ordered one of those shirts and four beer glasses. I saw yours and read it out. Thank you very much. Good luck with the overclocks. Thank you, uh, Eric, for picking those up. We appreciate it. I hope you enjoy it. Lewis, $2. How jealous are you about Linus's MSI Dragon? I saw that. Did he stream that today? Uh, I saw that. That was like... <laughs> It's funny. It wouldn't fit in our door, so he can have it, I guess. Um, seems like the kind of thing Linus would get. It's, it's very Linus. It's suitable for him and his office. 12,147 versus 12,021 previously, so we're going up for sure. And let's do another one with hardware info running. So this will contaminate the results a bit, but I want to see where is our... You know, let's run it on a stress for a little bit. Stress, just a stress test. Actually, I'm going to do a looping CPU test here. So we're going to loop the CPU test, and we are going to run it windowed, looping enabled, run custom. And then what we're going to do is look at the hardware info readout uh, while it goes. So I'm going to let it kind of heat up for a bit, and then we'll check the numbers in, a, in about a, maybe two or three minutes and see where the core is sitting at that point. Um, for the frequency and voltage we've specified. Also, I need to make sure it's actually got all cores enabled, which it does. So zero to seven, so that's eight cores. And because I was playing around with that earlier, you know what I need to overclock is the, un the uh, uncore as well. I haven't done that yet, and that definitely needs to go up. But that'll be pretty interesting to see how much that impacts results. So we're at 5,200 for everything. And V core should be pretty low, I think. So it says 1.27 right now. Let's see what it says when it runs the benchmark. I probably need to run the stress test instead. 1.26. Pretty damn low, but this is through the motherboard. So um, I don't have a better readout than that right now. Uh, I'm actually going to cancel this and run a stress test instead so it doesn't have the loading screen in between because I kind of realize that's going to be a, an issue. Stress test. Go away. Stop it. You bastard. <laughs> Just die, just die, 3D Mark. Okay, so we're gonna run a stress test on loop and see what our temperatures look like. Under a 540 rad with really loud fans, uh, delitted with liquid metal. I should walk through all those specs again in a second. Let's just run that loop and see what that gives us. So, okay, uh, a couple of things to read through. Let me check on normal chat. How's normal chat doing? What's normal chat say? Chat, do you not agree we need Gamers Nexus Vadi pillows? So I see chat hasn't changed at all since the last time I checked on chat. <sighs> Make sure it's not on game mode. Yeah, yeah, that was a not a great one. Uh, I'm waiting for chat to say something. Waiting. I've been disappointed before. Don't disappoint me again. Uh, okay, so we got... Love your show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, Steve. We're good. Good to hear. 
Good to hear the uh, chat spokesperson has, has spoken for all of you. You're all good. I, I assume you collected, congregated, and, and came to a mutual agreement on your answer. Uh, what else? Oh, where'd it go? There was an actual question in there somewhere. Where'd it go? Something about the 900K pre-orders. I can't find it. Uh, oh, I, s I found another one, though. So this stream made me try and get my 7700K from 4.9 to 5.0. Been running without errors with 1.288 volts. Nice. That's always really cool to hear. Uh, I'm always glad to hear that the overclocking live streams encourage people to try doing more of their own overclocking because it's pretty fun. And if it's even on our production system, so I pushed one of our production machines to uh, 5 gigahertz all core on an 8086K, which is not impressive. We've done 5.35 on those. But uh, it is a significant uplift from stock, which is like 4.3 all core. And we need it to be stable. So I, I can only sacrifice so much stability for production. But it's way faster, and it's, it's pretty fun to do. So glad to hear chat is uh, some of you are, are inspired by the overclocking live streams. Check on those numbers. So I'm going to open these up. And let's find, what am I looking for here? Looking for core temperatures. There we go. So there's our cores. Running very cool right now with time spy. It's not a heavy load, though. What kind of current are we drawing in this benchmark? I think the bench just ended, so I'm going to have to uh, wait a second. Oh, there it goes. OK. So for current, I'm just going to zero this meter out and get a clamp reading. It's four. Something's weird. That's not right. Four. Oh, it's because uh, basically GPU. Because the stress test doesn't have a looping physics test. That's annoying. You know what? Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, um, people wanted Prime earlier, wanted Blender. Let's do Prime. And let's do a non AVX Prime. So we're going to do Prime 26.6. I think it's compatible. And it's non AVX. So it's abusive, but it's not as abusive. Not nearly as abusive. And we're going to do custom. We're going to do 8x8 eight eight, uh, fast Fourier transforms. And we're going to run those in place. Let's let that go. So here's a non-AVX workload. This is comparable to like maybe a gaming workload or something like that, kind of a stressful gaming workload if you're CPU bound. And there's our temperatures. So we're in the 60s to 70 right now with that workload. Time spy wasn't enough. It was only pushing. So that's why the current clamp's nice. It's only pushing three amps. So it wasn't really doing anything. And that's because the GPU is doing everything. Apparently, the stream went down for a second, but it's back. So let me double check on that. It looks like the stream is fine. So it uh, should be here if you dropped out. All right. <laughs> Chat is spamming refresh. Stream is fine. Just refresh. It's amazing how quickly people drop out without hitting F5. All right, so I don't know where it, uh, he didn't go small FFT. No, I went smaller FFT. I did eight by eight custom FFTs. Uh, so this is 26.6. I don't know when it dropped out. Um, is, it, is it live or what? <laughs> is it uh, still playing? Or is it YouTube going to, no, it's still playing. Okay, cool. Cool. Looks good. So yeah, we're doing Prime 95 26.6. And uh, that is, oh, is Linus live? Okay. I see. Linus, last time when we were live, and we beat his score, he sent like $31 donations, which probably, what is one Canadian to USD? So he was, he was basically throwing 75 cents at me over and over the period of like an hour uh, after we beat his score. And I told him I'd, I'd get him back. You know, I haven't, um, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. I think this is a pretty good chance to do that. I pull up our chat on one side and Get his window on the other. Okay. Uh, use Alt F4 to refresh. Don't do that. If anyone, I don't know how, if anyone still falls for that. That's kind of crazy. I don't see a stream. He must only be on, uh, is he only on Twitch right now, I guess? I'm looking for it. PC World, $5. Keep up the good work, Steve. Thanks, PC World. Uh, 
So we, we featured our discussion with Gordon on PC World's channel um, in our 9900K review, where Gordon, it was actually a pretty good clip. Gordon said to me, uh, he was talking about the solder, Intel solder, Tim. And he said, so they're giving us what we wanted. You can't complain now, right? And I said, you can always complain. And Gordon just said, okay. <laughs> so the key. I think Gordon's with it. Gordon knows our thing. So this thing, 26.6, Prime 95, non-AVX workload, running at 60s to 70 for the high end, looking at 71 degrees Celsius for the worst case. We're doing pretty damn well for temperature. I am I'm happy with that result. So let's drop that out and uh, get back into BIOS and see how much more we can push it. We're really not pushing voltage that much yet. So looking pretty good. And I need to... Keep an eye out for when Linus' stream goes live, too, of course. Uh, and also, I'm going to tweet out a link to ours, let everyone know that if it went down for them, it came back. Let's see, stream is back up if you uh, had downtime. Stream is back up. OK, so that's rebooting. Let's see, we're going to go into BIOS after I send this tweet. Almost missed it. <laughs> the monitor is a lot cleaner now. OK, cool. So uh, stream is back up now. Live overclocking a deleted 9900K with liquid metal. We're not overclocking it with liquid metal, but it has liquid metal, and we're, we're overclocking it. All right. Super chats coming in. I'll check those in a second. Linus is up now. OK, cool. So I'll, I'll send him a bunch of nickels and pennies in a minute, I guess. Uh, so we have, you know, let's just type in 53 and watch it crash so we can all be satisfied with that result and then let's start pushing the voltage up after that. It's got to crash at some point here. <laughs> all right. So uh, Super Chats, we got... I got Lewis's uh, murder two dollars. What AIO cooler do you recommend at stock? No overclock. Uh, so we were using a two hundred and eighty CLC, and stock it did completely fine for Blender. It was like I want to say in the sixties maybe, but that was with ASUS's auto voltage. So voltage on motherboards is variable. Uh, it depends on how well tuned it is. I think it crashed before it even booted. By the way, so we finally got our crash we wanted, and um, the better the board with with a better pro or a, a BIOS, the more likely you are to run lower temperatures stock because some boards will blast the voltage when stock, just for no reason, just because they're bad. Um, so that's something to keep an eye out for. So we finally had a crash and restarting it. Peter, DKK50, a donation towards a haircut. <laughs> By the way, Smash Records, I cheer for you. Well, I'll take the money for, uh, for the record smash and for ice in the future. All right, 53 did not work out. Let's just bump that voltage, 1.4, which is really going to be 1.35 with VDroop. Next one, uh, Tostito Bandito, one of the best names. $2, please shout out CPU and VRM temps as you go up. We can do that. Uh, keep an eye on it. David Conley, $7, do you think the NVIDI that NVIDIA should make a cheaper 2080, 2080 Ti, and 2070 without RTX features. Also, is it worth going into computer engineering? The first half of the question, uh, I feel like a cheaper 2080, 2080 Ti, and 2070 without RTX features already exist, and it's called the entire 10 series. So NVIDIA already made it. They just need to keep making it. Uh, I, yes, that was my answer. And then, uh, well, I don't think they should. I think they should keep making the 10 series, but they're not going to. Is it worth going into computer engineering? Do you like it, I guess? Um, there are plenty of fields. You don't have to go to school for it, but it can help. It just depends on what you're trying to do. And um, there are a lot of jobs that are worth looking into in the industry if you like this industry. So people often overlook jobs like technical marketing. That's really cool. And a lot of our interfaces with different companies are in technical marketing. And despite the name marketing, they are often the least BS people in the whole company. So they kind of are, they're between PR and us, and they handle technical questions and almost every time uh, give very straight answers. And if you're, like, if you're fairly technical, but you're not an electrical engineer, that's a really good field to look into. Uh, 
Okay, let's do Cinebench baseline, or actually, yeah, we need to see if it's even stable. We're at 5.3 now, which is where it was not stable last time I tried this. But I am going to try a bit harder this time. So let's see if 5.3 will hold. I'm going to guess no. That is going to be my guess. I think it's going to crash within 15 seconds. And if it doesn't, then that'll be really cool. But it won't survive Blender, so it's not really stable. Uh, all right, Steve, go support Linus. Yes, let's, let's give Linus a couple of pennies and nickels <laughs> just to get them back. Are they talking now? They are talking. There's a sh their show's basically live. Uh, okay. So if you missed it, when we did our... Oh, it passed. 2292. So when we did our stream, uh, <laughs> where I beat Linus's team's single card score accidentally, like legitimately it was by accident, Linus then threw a bunch of, of single dollar donations at us. And, uh, and so I'm going to get them back here. Um, what should I say? What do I, what should I say to Linus in my super chat donation? Let's do, um, I bet he's not even going to notice it. He's just going to take all the money. Okay. Uh, so let's do a one, can I do 75 cents? Cause that's what he gave me. I think it's 76. Let's do 76 cents. Oh, he won't let me. It's only going to let me do a dollar. So when Linus did this to us, his, uh, his credit card was frozen because he did it too much. So, so uh, I'm going to try and avoid that. But let's um, I, keep in mind, I can't hear Linus the stream. So open up both of them, keep them side by side. And see, let me know if he, uh, if he even sees the donation. Because I have a feeling he's not going to. He's going to take all the money. And, uh, and no one will have any fun. Okay. So I'm going to run this single thread, get our new baseline or a new score for 5.3G. <laughs> it keeps wanting me to send $1. Buy and send. So I'm just spamming Linus's stream with Super Chats right now. It's almost definitely going to try and freeze my card too. Should make sure my phone's not muted. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do one more, maybe two. So that's running a, uh, this is running single threaded Cinebench 5.3 gigahertz right now. And for voltage, I put in a 1.4 with VDroop, we're probably 1.35, I'm gonna open up hardware info next. And uh, then after that, we can, uh, we can push another time spy score and then see if we can get up to Maybe 5.4, that would be pretty cool. But I don't think 5.3 is genuinely stable, even though it survived Cinebench. I, I do not think it's stable. Because um, it crashed in Blender when I did this last time. So, all right, let me do one more to him. This time I have to give, can you send an actual message with $1? No. Can you? Oh yeah, you, is it $2 only? $2, okay. Uh, just getting you back. Actually, dance, Linus, dance. Okay, that's better. <laughs> dance, Linus, with your new dragon. All right, let me know if he if he acknowledges any of those. I'm pretty sure Linus is aware of you. Someone says. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I need to like I need to call the credit card companies or something and say like, hey. Just to let you know, there's going to be a $101 uh, spends on my card, but I, it's, it's just an internet trolling attempt. Uh, no, it's totally intentional. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. So I sent Linus his $1. Hope you're all happy. Well, they noticed. They just noticed someone says, okay, cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> I see Luke laughing. So... I pretty much know what that sounds like in my head at this point. I'll do one more. Two more. I can stop anytime I want, really. All right. It's just so easy. Okay. All right. Good enough. Okay. Let's get back to this. So this is still running single threaded. Uh, so for the store purchases, thank you very much again for picking those up on the for picking up 
our new limited edition foil graph logo shirt on the store. It's sort of a quad foil. You could say it's a, it's a four-way SLI foil setup. And that is limited edition. We're posting it now to figure out the sizing distribution. It's pretty damn reflective, uh, which is cool for camera. And uh, if you want to pick one up, we will not be making them again once we sell out. The last one sold out in about two weeks, maybe two and a half. So we expect these will sell out within the next, I don't know. It'll be pretty short term, though. Uh, it does not take long to go through these. So thank you for the support. One of the best ways to support us while we're live streaming. And we need to get back to overclocking. But let me read a couple of these. Blake from Little Rock picked up the Graph Logo shirt, the standard Graph Logo shirt, and the uh, Cobalt Blue Teardown glass. Thank you very much. We had an order from uh, Levi in Florida. Picked up the, oh yeah, the zipper hoodie. The, uh, the zipper hoodie is back in stock. The winter hoodies are back. I restocked those recently for the colder weather. Sean from uh, Oklahoma picked up a limited edition foil shirt. Let me read one more here. No guarantees I'll get to yours, but I will try due to volume. Can't always get them. Dustin from Canada picked up one as well. Okay, so we got our result in. This is 232 for single threaded. Just to give you a comparison to where we were previously, we started at single threaded of 219 and we climbed to 225 at 5.1 gigahertz. We then went to, uh, and that starting was complete stock, I believe. And then, or yeah, complete stock. And then we went up to uh, 229, 5.2, and we got 232, 5.3. 5.3 shouldn't be stable. So I'm not gonna complain too much, I guess. But let's, um, let's kind of dirty the scores a bit and run hardware info while we're doing this just to see what kind of uh, numbers I'm getting. So it does, in fact, say 5.3. So that's good. So it is reading 5.3. We're not anywhere close to overheating. That liquid metal and the radiator are doing their work for sure. And I should walk through that bench again, too. So we're in the 70s right now. Pretty damn good. What's our V-Core think it is? It thinks it's, uh, oh, it's actually, so 1.39 when it's not running. Sounds correct. When it's running, we have V-Droop. So 1.35-ish reading from the motherboard via software, not the best way to do it, but it's the best measurement I have right now. Does this report VRM temperatures? It probably does. I'll have to dig for them. And I'm at a weird viewing angle on the screen. Uh, so we have some temperature sensors in the 30s. There we go. No, that's obviously inaccurate. Okay, well, we're not gonna go by those then. Temp 9, not sure what that is, 90 C. Either way, the CPU is fine. That's all that really matters. How is the VRM, though? Let's, let's do the field test. It's not hot enough to make me recoil, so it's under 60 degrees Celsius. That's, that's how you know what temperature the VRM is. Okay, so we're good there. Let's get our time spy score in, and then we can, um, we can try and push it harder, I guess. I need to do uncore a bit, too. I'm pretty damn sure this is not stable in a real workload. Uh, but time spy should be a decent stressor as well. Let's run that. CPU test only. So that does not take too long to do. Uh, we got another store order. Thank you for sending that in. Philip from uh, Albert Lea, or Lee, Lay. Limited edition foil shirt. Thank you for picking that up. I'm gonna check on chat. What's chat saying? What did Linus think? Did they say anything or did they just laugh? Linus said call. I don't believe you. I'm not going to fall for that this time. <laughs> you completely disrupted Linus' stream. Oh, nice. Okay. Hi, Linus. Probably can't hear us. So anyway, we're at 5.3 running time spy right now. Linus thinks your card got blocked. I'll prove to him that it didn't. Send super chat. $2. My viewers say you think my card got blocked. Is this a ploy to get more money out of me to convince to prove that you're wrong. I guess I have to give five dollars to send that message. <laughs> okay. All right there. Tech Deals is doing it now too. He just sent in one dollar on their stream. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, Time Spy score 12,419. Keep me in the loop on what they're saying doing. Um, 12,419 for Time Spy. That's pretty damn good. I don't know why it's surviving. Um, let's run a, let's run Prime. It might be just surviving because the temperatures are so much lower than last time. So let's just run Prime. 
no AVX, and we're going to do 8 by 8 Okay, let's see if this survives. This, sh this is not AVX, it's not the worst case, but it will be pretty bad. And we'll do AVX next. I'm pretty sure that'll crash it though. So we're in the 80s for Prime. That's to be expected. Are all the cores alive is the question. All of the cores are in fact alive at 5.3. For now, let's do a check on the current clamp. So this over here is our current clamp and it's gonna be upside down, sorry, but try and zoom on that, I guess. Uh, maybe I should do, try and do, hang on. I don't know about that. Uh, okay. That's still accurate. <laughs> All right, can you see that okay? So 23.9, 24 amps right now into the EPS 12 volt headers uh, on our clamp. So whatever 24 times 12 is, is gonna give you our power consumption in watts. And I need to get through our own super chats in a second, but uh, so 12 by 24, so it's about 288 watts right now. That's pretty damn high. Hasn't crashed. We've got one core at 90. The rest are doing pretty damn well. And let me walk you through this setup again. For those of you who, chat's been kind of flowing a bit, so we have some people <laughs> who might not have been here earlier to see the brilliant setup that we have. So first of all, um, allow me to point out again the suspension bridge engineering we have with a tightrope. Uh, I, believe, I believe The Verge calls these tweezers. We use the tweezer to hold the... Uh, rather wobbly pole here, yikes, to the test bench. That's got a 540 millimeter radiator on it. It's one of those thin ones, I think EK calls those SE. And uh, like I said earlier, the whole point of this was originally, I didn't want to do ice, because I felt like that was too unrealistic. We'd do that later. And I kind of wanted to do uh, something more realistic. So I started with an open loop. And then I put that on it, so it's not that realistic anymore. We have EK Furious fans flying really high RPM, thus are loud. Uh, RTX 2080 Ti. The motherboard we have an Asus Maximus 11 Hero that's holding up pretty well. It's not at recoil temperature yet for that VRM heat sink, so assuming it's sinking heat okay, uh, it's doing pretty well. And then we have um, G Skill Trident Z Black for the memory. I need to start overclocking some of that as well. So. Uh, we're at 5.3 right now. That is certainly higher than our review. So that's pretty great. Uh, in our review, I stopped at 5.2. I was having crashing issues. We're at 91C in this test for some of the cores. So this is, um, this is going to push the limits of what we can do if we were to use Prime. But we can still keep pushing Cinebench. And we've never done sort of a Cinebench live overclocking stream before. I've got Time Spy in there as well. But Cinebench is different and kind of fun to do. Um, Pretty interesting to see the scores. <laughs> Realistic, using a radiator that no case I know of other than maybe thermal take could mount. Yeah, I mean, that was the, that was the, that was the joke. So we're going to reboot, see if I can do, um, I should probably start doing Uncore at this point. Uh, I like to keep Uncore about four points under in multiplier, the all core multiplier. But I want to see if 5.4 will hold as well. So let's do that first. What's chat saying? Put it in the refrigerator. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna do that. All right, uh, so let's see if it crashes at 5.4. We do have all cores on, right? Yes, I don't know why this is so stable this time. I guess it's the cooling is really beneficial. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention again, Linus has moved on, someone says. Okay, finally. Um, so, I forgot to mention, for those of you who have just joined recently, the CPU is delated. I show the delayed process in the, the review, which is on the channel. And in that process, we, of course, encountered the solder, the, as Intel calls it, STIM or STIM. And the solder is indium. It's really soft. It's pretty easy to remove. It's pretty easy to crack. I wouldn't recommend delitting this time for most of you. If you're really trying to push the limit, like what we're doing today, then yeah. Liquid metal is going to get you further. Uh, removing that silicone adhesive and thus reducing the gap between the IHS and the dye significantly helps in cooling. The reason the Intel stem is not as good as things like liquid metal 
based on their Bowers testing and, and some of our own coming up, is because the liquid metal is a really thin sheet and the solder is pretty thick. I don't remember exactly what Roman said it was for thickness, uh, but I don't remember if it was the adhesive or the stem. Either way, one of those two was 0.5 millimeters, pretty damn thick, and uh, that inhibits the thermal transfer efficiency. So, um, so that's why we're seeing better numbers with liquid metal, even though it is a soldered chip. But props to Intel for doing solder finally, because it is better, and that is important. So we're, we're definitely overall in a better spot than we were previously. I, need to, I just closed hardware info, I need it open. All right, 5.4 is, is clocking in here, ish. And is it gonna survive? Let's do Cinebench first. I feel like that's more likely to survive. Uh, Cinebench. Okay, so how quickly will it crash? Or will it crash? We're not overheating on anything. And that is because it froze. <laughs> so as you can see, the thermals are quite good right now. It's not doing any work. I kind of like the old BSOD screen better. The frowny face is too stupid for me. I can't take it. I got to read uh, some of our own super chats in a second. Give me a sec uh, second to get through those. People are saying their 9900K pre-orders didn't ship from Amazon. That's very unfortunate. Okay. So we got um, Ben Quigley, $2. Thank you. Please do long sleeve shirts. We've heard the request. We'll start looking into it. Uh, a couple of you have asked for those recently. We do have the Raglan hoodies on the store. We have the winter hoodies on the store as well, of course. So 5.4, no good. Let's uh, bump that a bit. 1.42, how about that? 1.420 for chat. Uh, we got Tom's NOK20. Thank you very much for the super chat donation. What CPU is it, and does it have ray tracing? <laughs> it's it's not a 7980XE this time. It does it doesn't have ray trace. Actually, the CPU has more ray tracing than RTX does. I guess in that you can you can you can use it for production tasks that involve rendering things with ray tracing in not real time. Uh, Trey Waters, five dollars. Do you think that the Maximus 10 Hero Z370 VRM can handle overclocking the 9900K to 5 to 5.2 gigahertz given silicon lottery for 24-7? Or do you recommend the Maximus 11? I haven't tested this on the 10. The 10 is tied up in another test bench right now. That's a great question, though. Uh, I will make a note that we want to look into that because that is a good question. So Maximus X with 9900K. Okay, we can, we can look into that. All right. Is it just going to die instantly again? Or will it survive this time? I'm going to go with die instantly or throttle. Next question. Uh, Madarius, $2. What block are you using? EK Supremacy Evo, I believe, is what we're using. It did not seem to like this very much. Okay, our <laughs> info. Let's see why I didn't like it. I think we're at, we're about at the limits. 5.3 is pretty damn good. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So it is crashing, but it's not as bad of a crash, but it is a crash, so it doesn't count. Let's do, um, let's see Time Spy, if Time Spy will do it. If not, we start playing around with Uncore next. That's a very important number that we need to log as well. So I did get numbers for 5.3 for everything, so it survived that. All right, we got uh, A. Venerchik, $2. Your flickering LED keyboard is driving me crazy. Sorry. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I turned them off. Um, my Logitech, uh, or no, not even that, my Microsoft keyboard over here, though, doesn't seem to bother anyone. The one from probably 15 years ago or more. Okay. Uh, Arkar, 
$10, no message, thank you very much. Mr. Fierro, $10. I've got a 6700K 4.5G 1.3 volts GTX 1080Ti. I play 1080p at 144 hertz. Would an 8700K or 9700K benefit me in FPS and also occasional 720p uh, streams? Not sure how much my CPU is limiting my GPU. Honestly, not a whole lot. Like in games, maybe you're gonna be more limited in your streaming than you are in your gaming for the most part. 1080p, 144 hertz, okay. 144 hertz is a bit of a different story, but um, hey, it survived. Uh, so, should you upgrade? I don't think you should upgrade to an 8700K at this point. It's a good CPU, but it doesn't really, I don't know. I, I kind of, I wanna see what happens to the 8700K pricing in a couple weeks, and I wanna see what happens to the 9900K pricing in a few weeks. If you're pretty happy on your system now, I'd say just wait, see what happens, Come Black Friday, stuff like that, see if anything pops up. Um, we have benchmarks that can help you though with your questions. So uh, we had the 4790K, which isn't too distant from your CPU, in our 9900K review. So you can look at that number, uh, look at the 8700K number, and then kind of extrapolate a middle, that's where you are. And then you can look at um, the 9900K compared to those uh, midpoints to figure out if it's worthwhile. For streaming, 720p60 is really not that abusive. You can use NV Encoder for that. Like you can use your 1080 Ti's NV Enc for that just fine. You don't need the CPU to do that. So I, I, would, I, man, I would be pretty happy with your system the way you have it set up. It does not seem like it needs an upgrade. At 144 hertz, if you're like, you can't hit 144, you're unhappy with it, then yes, upgrade. But um, I'll point you to our benchmarks to figure out which parts you need to upgrade because it's uh, I guess it depends on what kind of games you're playing. So 12,521 was our score for that pass. We, it did survive, it did not survive Cinebench. And um, let me type that down. So this is 5.4G, 5.4 gigahertz, all core. Uh, Cinebench did not finish. And Time Spy was 12,521, okay. What was our max temperature? 76 to 80, not bad. Definitely survivable, pretty cool. Okay, so let me, uh, let me check on chat. What's chat up to? How's chat doing right now? Someone says lol GPU encoding for streaming. It's fine. The guy's talking 720p. Like, NV encoders, completely fine for that. Um, if you really wanna use the CPU for it, Sure, but if you're streaming to YouTube, I think you'll be hard pressed to see any legitimate difference between them. Like if you did a blind test, 720p, really? You think NV Encoder can't handle that? <laughs> All right, uh, so chat, what's going on? Cinebench 15 corrupted, uh, maybe. We'll, we'll try it again, see what it does. I just restarted it to see if that, um, if that did anything uh, different for stability. And if it's corrupted, I can get it, obviously get it easily enough. Cinebench, certainly possible. So corrupted or unstable? I haven't changed the frequency or voltage though, and I will have to do that. If we get a blue screen, I'll feel more comfortable <laughs> than if we get the, uh, the Cinebench error message. So I'm gonna let this freeze for a second while I do uh, checking on chat and everything. Uh, someone says nothing wrong with Sandy Bridge. That's definitely accurate. Sandy Bridge is a damn good product still today. <laughs> what software to track CPU heat? So uh, we're using Hardware Info 64 for just everything readout. Hardware Info 64 is probably my favorite software utility for logging anything these days. It's very good and it's free, so I can recommend that pretty well. Uh, it is, is very good software. Steve, when is my Threadripper APU coming? I'm gonna say probably not soon. <laughs> okay, so that's normal chat. Uh, this is still freezing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just force a restart on it and drop the frequency down. We're at 5.4 gigahertz now. Not really stable, but passing tests, kind of. I'm gonna drop that down and uh, and see if Cinebench will pass again or if we need to overwrite the files, like if it got corrupted or something. 
Okay, super chats. We got ten dollars. Our car, ten dollars. Uh, thank you. I game on 1440p, 60 gigahertz. That's that's a really high frame rate. I plan to upgrade to 144 gigahertz. Uh, I'm thinking Ryzen 2700X or 9900K. You might need like a 99,990K or something if you're doing 144 gigahertz streaming. Uh, so in all series, it's 144 hertz versus 60 at 1440. Um, I don't like over, or I like overclocking, they say. And I don't plan to upgrade for another five years. What do you recommend? If 144 is what you really want to do, uh, and you like overclocking, I would say the 9900K if price is no object. Um, keep in mind that your GPU, at 144, you're asking a lot of both the GPU and the CPU. So I don't know what GPU you have. Make sure it's well balanced. If this is a scenario where you already have a really good GPU and you just need the CPU and you have the money, the 9900K will do what you want. I have no problem saying that's, that would be my pick for that, uh, for your requirements. If you don't have a video card and you have a budget of an amount where buying the 9900K would pull away $200 or more from your video card purchase, then I would say get the lower end CPU and spend more on the video card uh, if you're pushing 1440p. But there is, a, there is a disparity at 1440p between the 9900K and the 2700X this time. Uh, we showed that in our review. So I'm going to drop this back to 5.3 because I know that passed in a bench. We're going to see if it is corrupted or not. And then we'll do, um, I really want to do Uncore. I was just waiting for the, the all core to stop working. So Uncore is coming up soon. There's no point in buying anything until 7 nanometer is out. That is an ext extremely narrow view of technology. I mean, look, like... First of all, 7 nanometer, not all processes created equal. So Global Foundry 7 is close to Intel's 10. Uh, secondly, if Intel can ever make 10. Secondly, um, there are plenty of reasons to buy before 7 nanometer. Like if you need a computer, for example, because you don't have one, that's a good reason to buy. Instead of waiting and uh, for who knows what price at what time. The way I look at it is if you're happy now and you don't, need an upgrade and it does what you want, then don't buy. Uh, and in that respect, waiting does make sense. If you need a computer, just build one. Um, I mean, once you've got the money together and you've done the research, at some point waiting is only going to set you back, especially if you use your computer for work or something where you can make money with that computer. Then you, you should just build it sooner and get that going. 2287. So it worked. So it wasn't stable. So it's not corrupted. It just wasn't stable. That's good. Uh, I need to get through some. Oh, we got a ten dollar from PC World. Ten dollars. Oh, hey, look, we're streaming, watching, watching the stream. Please tune in, Steve. <laughs> they just want me to give them nine dollars, like I did for Linus. I think it was actually fifteen. I gave Linus fifteen dollars. Crossing streams with Gordon Ma on. <laughs> nice. He does have them. Gordon has, hang on, hang on. We're going to do this, OK? I don't know if Adam is keeping tabs on these. We're going to, we're going to infinity stream this. This is why the tech community is awesome. All right, turn that around. Can you see that OK? So we are streaming, watching Gordon watching our stream, watching Linus's stream. How, how deep does the rabbit hole go, Gordon? I, we're going to wait. We're going to wait until his catches up to here. And I'm going to try and keep an eye on Gordon and see if he has a reaction. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm with the camera now. I'm, I'm watching it. So this, if you don't know who that is, that's Gordon and Elena. Uh, from PC World, and we did a really fun interview with Gordon here. <laughs> nice. This is pretty awesome. So we did a, a really fun interview with Gordon um, where uh, I was on his channel. You should check it out. It's on their PC World YouTube page. I think it's their main video right now, talking about the 9900K before it came out. I wish I could hear what he's saying. 
<laughs> I'll have to go back and watch this later. <laughs> All right, we'll keep an eye on that for <laughs> another, uh, another benchmark. You're taking the Fantex case away. <laughs> oh, we need to film the intro and outro still. But if you get it ready to pack, I'll do the, um, I'll do that after the stream, and then I can finish packing it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, they're 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 fun people at PC World. We appreciate their content. Okay. Uh, so whole of the YouTube community is all wa everyone's watching each other right now. <laughs> all right. Um, 2287 was our score, and that's on 5.3. Does that compare to our previous 5.3? Yes, 2292 previously. So I think it's time to we try and stabilize 5.4 because it did kind of work. Try and stabilize that. We have a little bit of thermal headroom, maybe like 15 degrees to spare, and we're gonna try and stay, get that going for 5.4. And um, then I need to do uncore finally. And then we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Streamception. How do you like that thick new die? It is pretty damn thick comparatively to the previous ones. And that's why when we did all that 8086 benchmarking thermally versus this one, I, I was so happy with that idea. Uh, and delitted it and saw that the dies are different. I mean, I, I knew they were different sizes, but different thicknesses too. So it's not a perfect comparison. That's why we ended up doing delid with thermal paste. Went backwards. I'm sure, people at Intel are like, I don't get it. They, they've been complaining about solder for like three years, and then they put their own face on it. Why? Super chats. What's what's up in in these? So five dollars from Eric. Thanks for doing streaming tests in your reviews. Does resolution affect CPU usage when streaming? Or does moving past 1080p only strain more GPU? Primarily the GPU um, for the streamer side, uh, as in the player. For the viewer side, that's a good question. I would imagine that it should strain the CPU if you're doing CPU encoding and you're encoding more pixels. That's my, that's my intuition on that, but I have not tested that. I have tested different bit rates, and that impacts the CPU uh, load a bit. So I would say it is, it is reasonable to expect that resolution would as well. But I don't know if it's linear. No, I haven't tested it. So we're going to try one more time. Oh, we don't want 4 volts. That would be very bad. <laughs> four. Let's do 1. Point, we were at 1.42, which is in reality like 1.4 after droop. Let's try 1.435. Let's try 1.435. Uh, See if that's stable this time in Cinebench. And if not, then we will move on and do uncore overclocking. Alex West, $5. Using liquid metal to soften the stem should work with a bunch of O's. The indium and the liquid metal should bond with the indium and the solder and soften it. Might be worth the video. I don't know if Rowan did that in his, but that would make, I, I mean, that sounds reasonable. I'm not a materials engineer. He is. Um, like I said, I just used a knife, but that sounds smarter. I have not tried it though, so can't endorse it. But it is uh, something worth trying for sure if we do another one. Or if there's some solder left on this one. But I think I got it all. Being that I used a knife and then sandpaper, <laughs> it's pretty effective. Okay, so uh, Cosma, $5. How often do you condition your hair? I use thermal paste every morning before going into the office. Uh, I try to use like 12 watt per meter Kelvin paste for that purpose. Okay, so that, that's not stable, clearly. We try more voltage, but we're gonna hit a, we're gonna hit a, um, a temperature limitation pretty soon. So I think, I really want 5.4 though. Let's try one, let's, let's see, if, see if we can do it at like 1.45, and if that's no good, which 1.45 is really more like 1.4 with droop and everything. Let's try that. Uh, Travis Wood, $5. What is your opinion on how a Z370 Maximus Hero X would handle the 9900K? Answer that question. And the answer was I took a note on it and I will look into it because a couple of you were asking. Michael Creech, $20. I've been wanting the decals for a while and I just saw you have them. Please make a black mouse pad 
and maybe a couple different sizes. Uh, yes to both. We have submitted our designs for a black version. So it's a black and blue version of this mouse pad. This one has liquid metal on it. <laughs> um, up in the top, it's got a liquid metal stain from earlier. So uh, this is a black and, or uh, sorry, a blue and white mouse pad on store.gamersnexus.net. And a lot of you have asked for black where the white is. This is a pretty popular design, but uh, there's a lot of demand for the black and blue, and I totally get that. So we submitted designs, and we should get those in, I don't know, sometime in the next month for sampling, probably. And then we'll put them on the store once we do. Is it going to survive? I need to check Gordon's stream again in a second. Uh, we also need to keep a, uh, a wary eye out for, nope, blue screens. I was going to say temperatures. The temperatures are irrelevant if uh, it's only on for five seconds. OK, so let's give up on 5.4. I think if I get a, uh, put that thing in an ice bucket, I can do 5.4. Chat says, I want that mouse pad. You want the one with liquid metal on it, because it's worth more, because it's probably got like $10 of liquid metal on it. <clears throat> Uh, okay, so are the Fs for the, the system crashing? Yes, okay, good. Never know if it's for the stream. Glad to see it's only for the system. So that was at 5.4. It's, it's almost there. I can hold it in Time Spy. Can't get it in Cinebench. I think I could do it with more voltage, but I want, um, I want uh, a chilled radiator probably for that. We're not gonna do one volt, don't worry. 53 is what we're at. Okay, I think I was at like 1.4 or something. Maybe 1.42. Let's just type in 1.42. And uh, cash ratio time. So we're at 53. Let's just type in 47 for now. And see how that does. Um, DRAM could probably use some work in a bit. Let's give that a shot. Ice cube in the reservoir. Someone says the mouse pad has Steve's DNA on it. Grow your own hardware Jesus. I'm flattered that you think my DNA is comprised of Galenstan compounds. <laughs> okay. uh, is PC World still watching? I don't know. That's, I, I doubt it. Let's check. Linus is still talking on his stream. But it looks like just about the news. PC World is still talking. Our BIOS is on their stream right now. Let's see if Gordon notices. Uh, uh oh, I hit a button. It'll go away eventually. No. No, I don't want night mode. OK. Let's see if Gordon notices uh, <laughs> that we're pointing at his stream again. How do I get this to go away? OK. All right, let's, this is a, this is a wild Gordon Ma'un in his natural environment. <laughs> Wish we're streaming their chat, streaming our chat. Oh, their chat's telling them, their chat is telling them that we're, we're doing it. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's a PC World stream. <laughs> Hang on, what can I? Uh, I need a I need a pen. I need to send a message to Gordon via archaic methods. Sharpie, that'll work. And I need a sticky note. <laughs> okay. We're going to send a message to Gordon, because I'm not sure if he can hear us. <laughs> see, see, see what they think. Uh, let's see, um, how about this one? 
here and fix our B S O D. Okay, are you zoomed in on that enough that they can read it? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> that reaction is pretty good. It's about what I was going for. It's probably a lot of gamma loss here, sorry for that. <laughs> uh, I'll, have to I'll have to check in with Gordon, see what he says later. Open invite, by the way, Gordon, if you, if you can hear us. There's Adam. <laughs> producer. <laughs> I have to wait for the other note to go up on the screen and then we can go back over. Is it up there already? Oh no, there it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so Windows booted in that time. <laughs> it did manage to get open. All I've done is change, uh, so we're at 5.3. This is where I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen. Because we're at 5.3, but I've increased the uncore to 47, uh, which is a, a pretty big jump. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. And as I noted before, one of the best ways to support us during these streams is to pick something up on the merch store. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net. Our new limited edition, oh, there, they opened something. Big thanks, need, oh no, what did it say? Need gr grains? Big thanks, need grains? What does that mean, Adam? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, hey, it survived. So here's where we can get some cool data. 2307 is what that says. And our previous 5.3 score was 2292. Let's run it again for sake of variance. So we might get a bit of a boost here. I think TimeSpy will be more sensitive to it. Um, and, uh, and we'll see how much that Uncore really matters in these different scenarios. So like I said, anyway, store.gamersnexus.net, we've got the new limited edition foil graph logo shirt. This one here, uh, it's a quad color foil. So you've got, the, if you don't know the story behind this design, by the way, the colors on the bars, uh, it matches our graph. So go look at one of our graphs, like in our review from today, and you'll see the it's average 1%, 0.1% low. Uh, that was that was Andrew's design idea for the graph logo. It's one of our best designs for the logo, I think. And this is a limited edition shirt. So once once they're gone, they're gone. We sold out of the last one in about two weeks. I'm going to try and shout out orders for these while they come in. Uh, so second round is 2315. So about, let's call it 2310, something like that. 2311, somewhere in there. And that is 5.3 this time. Uh, 5.3G all core with a 47X uncore. And that is 2315 NT. Okay, cool. Let's do a single threaded. And this is where we can learn a bit about the single thread performance if it cares about that cash ratio or not. And then we're going to push cash ratio some more. Let's check on the chat. Chat says Andrew is a great cameraman. And then they also say Shillception. So, never change. Um, is the shirt ray traced? I mean, yes, it is, it is real life. There are rays bouncing off of it. How, how, how much of your life do you want to have lived without it not having been ray traced? I believe is what the famous philosopher uh, ThomasHardware.com said. Super chats. All right, so like I said, we run on a bit of a delay on these, but I do, tr I do get to them all by the end of the stream for sure. Single slam and $5. I just wanted to give dollars to, uh, because GN rocks and Patrick builds great bridges. Yes, that is in reference to our suspension bridge. <laughs> uh, that's very fast. It's a very fast fan. This, you can shoot like a, a hair commercial here. So this is our suspension bridge with the uh, couple of twist ties, holding up a 540 radiator atop an EK Supremacy. Uh, despite the, the insulation here, it is not chilled. That is from the previous one, and maybe later we'll do that. <laughs> okay, 
So, um, got another one from David, $2. Tell Andrew he's a good cameraman and 3D designer. Okay, Andrew is aware of this. Uh, Kevin Daugherty, Daugherty, $2. Great vlog. Okay, thank you. Appreciate the two bucks. Uh, Commando, Sam, how's it going, Sam? $5, can you do a PBO auto OC testing with BCLK on a 2700X and Asus X470 board? I'd like to see the performance in games, et cetera, since it can yield crazy clocks. Um, I will talk to Buildzoid about that and see what his thoughts are because uh, he is definitely an expert in that, in, in AMD overclocking, and he has studied it more than I have. I kind of uh, start and stop with the reviews. We should do an AMD OC live stream sometime, but I need to, I need to look into it a bit more. Uh, like, I know enough to get the cores to 4.2 gigahertz all core for like 2700X. That's not a problem. But beyond that, I haven't looked into really any of the special tweaking um, memory. We've done some of that. Joseph, uh, $10. How badly would you expect X2 E5 or 2 E5 2687 WV2s to compete with a 1950X? Same clocks, 16 core, 32 threads. Ivy Bridge is pretty old. I would suspect they would not hold up too great in multi-threaded, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what the cache is on those chips. Uh, I, I've never paid attention to the Xeon CPUs. Um, but my suspicion would be that the 1950X would hold the lead at the same clocks in, uh, in some applications, but maybe not in gaming, I don't know. I'm not familiar with the Xeon, sorry. Michael James, $10. You need to let those rad fans blow your luxurious hair. Well, we've already walked by them quite a few times. Uh, there was a what CPU are you using one. I have to go find that one. What CPU? Of course, unfortunately, searching for that finds a whole lot of results. So 234 CV marks for our single thread. And that is with a 47X uncore and 5.3G all core. So uh, comparatively, our previous 5.3 was 232. It's within reasonable error. It's basically no difference for this application. Let's uh, let's do time spy. Let's do time spy next. We can bump that uh, that uncore up, or that cache ratio is what I should say. Um, time spy. Physics only, and we'll look at temperatures in a bit, and then try some more. Mark Lamut, $10. Would you expect the same performance using a 9900K and a Z370 board opposed to the new Z390 boards? Um, wondering if I'd need a new board if I decided to upgrade. So again, the board you're talking about, the Maximus 10, I've taken a note, people are interested in it, we can compare it. I would suspect that stock performance should be the same. Uh, weird MCE quirks notwithstanding. In other words, if you control it, be like all the same BIOS settings and everything, I would expect they would be the same performance. Um, overclocking performance, there's probably going to be some differences because the good Z390 boards do have new power delivery circuitry. Uh, so those will carry those with the really high overclocks better in theory. 12387, certainly lower than our previous high, but uh, 12387 for time spy, as opposed to 12419 at 5.3. And 12, 521 for 5.4. All right, let's, uh, let's bend the temperatures for now and just look at some other OC options. Let's see what my options are in BIOS beyond uh, what we've done so far. Linus is talking chit again, someone says. Oh, thank you. ZDG, thank you for pointing that out. Older Xeons are locked and overclocking. Yes, I had forgotten since the 3175 is actually unlocked. How many degrees C can you shave off by lapping? We'll be talking about that uh, coming up soon, well, in one of our content pieces. Camera sucks. Why you don't streaming and use capture card? So uh, thank you for your really kind message. Um, it's always a, a good way to get an answer is is to be very non-accusatory and not be a jerk. So you've done well there. We don't use a, a capture card to answer your, your seemingly rhetorical question because when it blue screens, as this has done several times, the capture cards drop out. 
I know that ePeak makes one. I talked to them recently that should survive those crashes, but that would, I, I haven't tested it. And the capture cards we have don't survive those BSODs very well. So it's just easier to do this and not stop the stream every time we have to like plug in an HDMI cable to kick it into gear again. All right. Uh, any info on X599? Not beyond what we saw at the Intel New York event. We, I got some photos there, but that's kind of it. We didn't really talk about them, though. So that'd probably be worth bringing up again. Uh, OK, let's try 50. Seemingly, this has been fairly stable. Memory. Actually, let's do one thing at a time. Let's make sure that's stable, then play around with memory. <clears throat> Steve, what is your goal with this OC? I just want to see how far it'll go. Um, let's see, what's a good target? So we're at 2315 multi-threaded. I would like to hit, I think I'd like to hit 2400 plus in Cinebench. And I'd like to maintain 12,500 in Time Spy, but that 5.4 G1 didn't count because it was unstable. Have we reached steady state? No, because it's constantly rebooting, so the temperatures are never steady state. All right. So let's do uh, this is a 50 cache ratio. See if it survives. And I'm going to check on store orders. So like I said, great way to support us during the streams is from the store orders. I'm going to try and shout some of them out while we're streaming. On store.gamersnexus.net, we have the new limited edition foil shirts in. We've also got the mod mats in, but we're running out of this round. Uh, and then we'll be on back order again for another probably month and a half while we get them shipped uh, for the next round. So we're, we're running pretty low on inventory on the mod mats for this round. Uh, for first one here, so Chad from St. Cloud picked up a limited edition foil shirt. Thank you, Chad. Got one from Arturo from Washington. Picked up the blueprint shirt and some decals. Thank you, Arturo. We have one from uh, Stephen in Australia. Picked up a limited edition foil shirt. There are a lot of, a lot of Stevens in Australia buying the foil shirt today. I uh, got one from Sean in the US, New York. Picked up the blueprint shirt and the cobalt blue teardown uh, beer glasses with the gold rim on them. Thank you for that, uh, for those orders and for the support. So we got 2308, not really a change. I think we need to do some, uh, some memory timings and speed. So this is 5.3 gigahertz all core, 50x uh, cash ratio. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what a memory bump will give us. I know this memory does 4,000 megahertz on our X299 platform. I have not tried it on this one, so for sure the memory can do it. Just kind of a question of what is the IMC bin for on the CPU, and what is the motherboard capable of, and we'll find out. This system's like pretty slow to reboot right now. So I, I'm just going to push to 4,000 megahertz and leave the timings alone for now and see if that will hold. Because I know the memory and everything else can take it. I just don't know if the IMC can. And then that'll be a good way to bump up our scores, especially in time spy. So, OK, uh, let's do DRAM. Timing control, I believe, is where Asus buries a lot of their stuff. So with auto, it's at 16, uh, 36. What are, our, what are our other settings? So if you've been kind of tuning in and out, other settings, we turned off uh, MCE, of course. We have SVID off. It's, not, it's in a different menu, though. Uh, AVX offset is off. CB core ratio is currently pretty stable at 5.3 and kind of working at 5.4 in times by only and nothing else. We have um, uh, disabled SVID, as I said. We've maxed out all the current limits. We have the cache ratio now at 50. And voltage is 
typed in as 1.42, but there's a lot of droops. It's more like 1.38. And uh, let's just go ahead and bump up that memory frequency to 4,000. And then go for, um, let's see, DRAM voltage, not four. I keep typing that in. Uh, 1.8, 1.65, something like that. Let's do 1.65 first. 1.8 should be fine. I don't know if we're going to have to bump up uh, SA or something. Okay. Are you going to use liquid helium? No. <laughs> Not today. Um, we do have an LN2 pot somewhere, uh, which will be used for dry ice in our next RIP-J stream. Just been waiting to survive the 2070 and the 9900K launches first. Okay. Those fans in the background are loud. Yes. This is an overclocking live stream. They're very loud. I'm sorry. I wish I could do something about it. Uh, it was pretty quiet when we were doing the ice bucket, though. So if for no other reason, then yes, the, the fact that they're loud. And, and obviously, we do apologize for it. We can't do anything about it if, if you want to see overclocking. Uh, if for no other reason than silencing those, the ice bucket's a good idea. So it's 4,000 megahertz with 1.65 volts VDIM going to be doable here. Uh, Steve, what is the best way to measure components with an IR temperature gun captain tape? Question mark. Your biggest concern is the same as thermal imaging. So your concern with any kind of thermography uh, or just an IR gun is going to be emissivity and reflect re reflectivity. So if you point it at like an aluminum plate, like a shiny aluminum heat sink, you're more likely going to read the reflected temperature than the heat sink temperature. And also it's the heat sink temperature, not the component temperature, so it doesn't matter that much. It should be hot after all. Um, so same concerns as with any uh, like thermal imaging devices. So the best way to do it is if you have to use an IR gun and you can't use thermocouples where you just probe it directly, then you want to expose the component. So you'd remove the heat sink ideally and take a shot at a, a black body surface. So like a matte black surface is going to give you the best measurement. If you're working with something where you can't get a, a, a matte surface and you always have just a reflective object you're dealing with, like a heat sink that is reflective, you get a, um, like a circular sticker on it, like a, a matte sticker, and stick that to it. It's not going to be perfect, but if you allow it to reach steady state, it'll be pretty damn close. And you can use that to spot check it. I would really advise using thermocouples instead uh, and sandwiching them like the really thin ones that are one one hundredth of an inch thick, like the, the la literally laser thin ones, sandwich them between the VRM uh, component and the, the, the heat sink. Score 2286, is that lower? I think that might be a dip down. Reflective like the GN shirt. Yes, this would probably not, this would reflect the room temperature if you were to take a measurement of it. Um, so that score is lower, and I'm going to rerun it just in case there's some variance going on. <clears throat> okay. You got a store purchase. Thank you. This one is from Jackson in Washington who picked up the Raglan two tone hoodie that we have, the blue black hoodie. And some beer glasses, thank you. Then we got super chats to go through here. So we had um, Rolling Rock, five dollars. How did you obtain your encyclopedic knowledge of hardware? <laughs> I really don't have that. Do you have an engineering degree? Are you self-taught or a mix of both? Um, I just experience, just working with all the stuff. So you, you, first, you have to know that you're never going to know everything about computer hardware because it's insanely complicated. And once you realize that, you can focus on the areas that matter the most to you and try to make the most sense of those. So uh, access to people like Derbauer and like engineers at different companies we work with helps a lot. Um, I have read a couple of, uh, of hardware engineering level books, but uh, most of the stuff I know just comes from experience, exposure to working with it, hands-on mostly, and, and then uh, access to engineers and people like that. Sergeant Zeta, $5. Tell Patrick he is the best case reviewer and bridge builder. Hear that, Patrick? He says thank you. <laughs> Clay Ottery, $10. Steve, Roman, focus on temps on the 9900K D-Lit. 
uh, down about nine degrees Celsius stock to DLID, 10 minutes in a prime 95, 95 run, prime 95 run. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, that's, I saw those results before he published them. So uh, yes, it, it did look good if you feel like DLIDing. Um, I still don't think it's really something I would encourage most people to do this generation because it's a real pain. It's not terrible, like it's not hard, it just takes more work than previously. Dixon Software, $10, Ice Cube in res. Not this time. We could do that. Maybe if there's enough demand for it, we'll do it at the very end of the stream. If I see enough demand in chat, I'll do it. Um, Barton, uh, Martin Bartoszewicz, $4.99. Say, hey, Joel, game tonight? Question mark. Keep up the good work, Steve, but why not add the 7980X in 9900K review benchmark charts? We didn't run it. It was in the other system for the RIPJ stuff. Darcy, $5. I have a 4790 and 980. Graphics is okay. Is it time to get 9900K and a 2080 Ti? Will I notice a difference in my web development and not just gaming? Or wait two more years. I don't, I don't know. Does, do GPUs affect web development? I wouldn't expect they would. I would think most of that's... I haven't done any web development in years, but it was never GPU limited in any way. So I would not factor that in unless you're aware of some need that I am not, in which case ignore what I'm saying and research it. Because uh, to my knowledge, GPU is not a huge impactor of, of things you would do for web development. But maybe I don't know something that you do. Um, 99, uh, if you're doing like 3D animations or renders, then yeah, it would matter. 9900K, same answer, same answer. Uh, I don't think it's really that. Uh, if you're doing something that's like way more intensive than I'm aware of, then um, I would have to point you to, an, to someone specialized in benchmarking that stuff. Wishbone, two, this, is, this goes back to the person who's asking how I know stuff. Uh, and when I said, you have to first admit that you don't know everything about computer hardware because there's too much to know and it's okay to tell people, go read someone else. Like Anantech might have some information on that with their uh, Octane benchmarks or something, I don't know. Wishbone, two bucks. Why not test Beetle Adventure Racing on Halloween? Why is that a thing? 2343 this run. So 2343, I'm going to take a note of that. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit better. I would still like to hit 2400. We should run Time Spy and see if that has changed at all. All we've done is increase the frequency. We haven't tightened the timings. We're going to do that next. We're going to go down to CL15 next. And uh, that'll bump us a lot in Time Spy. But let's get a baseline at 4,000 megahertz first, assuming it will open. Come on, 3 Mark, you can do it. There you go. OK, Time Spy. Physics, run. Let's see what that is with 4,000 megahertz. So this is NT, and now we are at uh, 4,000 megahertz on the RAM. So we're up from 3,600 originally. We got a uh, store purchase. Thank you for those. Like I said, I'm not going to get all of them, but I'm going to try and get them as they come in uh, and spot check them due to volume. Can't always get them all. Austin Bo from Boulder picked up a limited edition foil graph logo shirt. Thank you, Austin. Very much appreciated. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, you and everyone else buying tonight are among the first to, to take a shot at it. And we do typically sell out uh, of shirts in general pretty quickly. It's just we're not going to restock this one. Chris from Texas picked up a mod mat. Thank you, Chris. We have one from, that's uh, just finished, Ian in Bozeman picked up the limited edition graph shirt. You read one more. And then Andrew from, uh, from Baton Rouge picked up a limited edition shirt as well. Okay, so we're at 12,635. What I say? I wanted 12,500 sustained. So we, we got that. We hit that mark. We're well past that mark on the CPU score now. So that's good. We're hitting, we're, we're achieving our goals. Start achieving uh, the Cinebench goals next. So 12,635 beats the goal a bit. And actually, we can push that a lot higher. So let's do that. And Cinebench, I want to hit um, 2400 NT without going further on the core overclock because we're going to become thermally constrained. So let's get this back in, do some DRAM timings. Gordon's not still alive, is he? Oh, they are still alive. Are they playing? They're playing a J video next to our video while they're streaming. <laughs> nice. 
I th I still think uh, what is what what is a uh, you know I'm gonna look here's what I'm gonna do this might not work I'm gonna look at Gordon's chat and ask what what is Gordon what are Gordon and Elena and Adam talking about in their stream because I I can't hear them so I'm gonna look at his chat then I'll look at ours after that I want to see which group lies to me more assuming, assuming Gordon reads or, or repeats what I'm saying than his. Uh, okay, so that's stable. DRAM, and I'm gonna look over there in a second. So, in our chat they're saying, nitrogen. That's, that's a direct quote. That's what I was greeted with when I checked our chat, nitrogen. Just listing off elements, I guess. Uh, Gordon and Elena, they are PC World. So they're streaming right now uh, on PC World stream, or, and they're <laughs> they have our stream on their screen while they're streaming. 15, 15, 28, actually 30, uh, 1, and then we're going to need to work on these too. Refresh interval, 32,767, is that the max? Probably is. Nope, goes up higher this time. What's the max on this? 65,000, there we go. Refresh interval, so REFI you want uh, high and RFC you want low. It's because you want to retain the data in memory as long as you can for benchmarks. And then RFC uh, is the refresh cycle time. And that, wow, that is super high. Holy crap, let's bring that down. That should be way lower than, it's at 700 auto. That is so high. Let's start there. <laughs> see, what, see if that even boots. I might need more voltage on there. Does PC World ever talk about PCs? Yes. It sounded like it crashed, but we're going <laughs> to let it try and reboot itself. It might cycle times a bit. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cycle for sure. I need more uh, voltage in there too. All right. DRAM at 4,000. That is correct. Yes. What did their chat say? Uh, so their chat says, hi, Steve. <laughs> and uh, let's see, are they answering my question? This is cycling right now. So this is trying to do memory training. We're going to let it do it. See, if it, see if it kicks in. Oh, yeah, let's. Oh, do they not have Super Chat on? That's unfortunate. Turn Super Chat on, Gordon. I want to give you money. So, that didn't work. <laughs> a, a Z390, I think, behaves a bit differently from X299 <laughs> with the memory. Um, we'll bump that later. Uh, okay, let's start here. Let's start with just that. Why is zero gonna... Okay, there we go. Let's see if 15 holds. For sure that holds on our X299 with the same kit, so. <laughs> All right. 300 is not too low on X299. Um, it, like, it holds on this kit, but it might be on this platform or with this IMC, you're definitely right. Although I do suspect uh, I, I do question your intentions when you say 300 is too low, try 420. I have to question, I have to question your intentions there. What CPU is it? 9900K. Uh, new age culture, $5. I'll wait for the 9900K to come back in stock. Yeah, we'll see when it, when it ships. Um, Alex, $5. Would you guys be willing to review and compare the Live Gamer 4K capture card, uh, internal and external? I would love to see these reviewed. No current plans to. Um, we have worked, we reviewed that Elgato one. That was kind of interesting with the heat sink on it that wasn't actually connected to anything. That was, a, that was a fun one to review. It did okay. Just weird design. Very weird. <clears throat> Are still on one? Yes. Okay. <sighs> Gordon's chat is saying, hey, Steve says turn on super chat. 
Okay, so Super Chats. Uh, Ben Grogan, I have a 3770K running at 4.5 gigahertz. I have a Strix 10 ATI. How much am I losing performance-wise, and how modern a chip do I need to let it run free? So we tested the 1080 Ti, I think, with a G4560, and, uh, and a couple of other devices, too. I think we started to see throttling around 1066 gigabyte class on the G4560. But to answer your question, um, you can look at our results from that review. Here's a good, uh, good way to do it. Actually, go back to our previous CPU reviews. We used the 1080 Ti, uh, pretty similar to yours. So if you go back to our 2700X reviews, the most recent with our old methodology, look at our 2700X um, review numbers for, uh, I th we might have a 3770 in there. If we don't, we have really similar ones, like maybe a 4790, something like that. Um, look at those numbers or find an Intel CPU at 4.5 gigahertz because if we're honest, the, uh, the IPC hasn't changed all that much. So look at one of those numbers from our 2700X review. It uses a 1080 Ti. And then what you do, you look at that number and then you look at the number for the highest end CPU we tested for that benchmark. And the delta uh, illustrates where you, your, your potential maximum headroom if your GPU will permit it to go that high. Uh, but that will be CPU bound because it's a CPU review. So the best way to use a review, it's a bit of work on the user's end, but you look at those numbers, like I just said, to figure out where's your maximum potential CPU side. And then you go look at one of our GPU reviews and you can look at the maximum potential in similar games for different GPUs. And hopefully the two sets of data together will help you come to a conclusion uh, as to how limited you are. The 3770K is going to limit the 1080 Ti a bit, yes. Um, there are very good CPUs out there these days. So uh, you've got upgrade options if you really want it. But the question I would ask again is, do you feel like you're actually limited? Um, or do you just want to spend money to upgrade? Both are valid, I guess. But just being aware of why you might want to upgrade is helpful. So this is not happy with 15, which is unfortunate, because it's no problem on the uh, other platform. And I'm not, we might need to bump like SA or something. Two. Okay, let's try that. All right, so we got a super chat from Crack on PC, Hong Kong 25. Thoughts on soldering quality between AMD and Intel? That's really hard to compare uh, because we can't do a like for like. So I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, Roman has deleted both. I haven't deleted AMD soldered CPUs. So you might want to check with him. $10 from Keratin. Noctua D15 with 9900K, yay or nay? Seems fine to me. That, that would, I mean, yeah, that's a big cooler. <laughs> uh, Maggot to the max, two dollars. Love watching. How do we pick between TR2 and 9900K? We haven't done the didn't do TR2 for these benchmarks. Not really gaming oriented. So, uh, but hopefully, hopefully find what you need. For picking between them, Charles Jones, five dollars. Just changed my radiator airflow to push instead of pull and dropped four degrees Celsius face palm. <laughs> Thanks for the stream. I that's that's pretty cool to drop four C that easily. Uh, it depends, of course, entirely on your fans, it depends on your case setup, so that's not going to work for everyone out there, but um, I do prefer push for the most part. Uh, I need to probably consult with Buildzoid because I am more familiar with X299 overclocking at this point than with... Um, or Z390 or Z370 even, as far as memory goes. So I'm not sure where kind of my limits should be for some of these voltages. What did we do for our 8086K overclock? What did we do then? 86K, Gamers Nexus. We did 5.35. I don't remember what we did for anything else. So that was 5.35. That was on two fewer cores, though. So we're doing better in that regard. We could do some BCLK stuff, I guess. Uh, we did have memory tuned 
decently. So we're at TRAS 28, we were at RFC of 240, we were at REFI of 165, uh, we had IO and SA to 1.3 with VDIM at 1.85 for maximum, and of course said that we don't recommend that for long term. Uh, I don't know how this silicon responds to like, so it, when does it turn red? I'm just, okay, to 1.3, let's just do it, who cares? Uh, 1.8, I'm not sure where the safeties are for this silicon versus previous, but um, it's review sample and this is part of the process. Which board are you using? We're using the Maximus 11. Uh, Maximus 11 Hero, I should say. Time for the ice cube, someone says. Uh, two bucks from, oh, we got $10 from, uh, I'm, I'm way behind, where, where did it go? Okay, found, found where we were. Unexpected sensation, $10, great content, thank you. P230, two bucks. Hey, what CPU is this? 9900K, damn it. Jeff Evers, two dollars, no message, thank you. Kinetic Conundrum, five dollars. Memory part two, uh, and when memory part two, and will it cover voltages in addition to secondary timings? Um, yes, it is covering secondary timings for sure. I don't think we're talking voltages. I'm only really versed in X299 memory tuning here. So. Kind of hitting some of my, uh, my experience limits on this. I'll have to consult with Buildzoid later. Oh, you know what? We were supposed to update the BIOS for this board, too. I forgot about that. They came out with the BIOS a couple hours before the stream started, and it improved the memory support. Go figure. Um, but also improved performance overall. So that is something I should do for the next one. Okay, let's do... Uh, <laughs> kind of out of out of ideas, much like Linus's shirt says about him. Um, there we go. Refresh cycle is much more reasonable now. It's amazing how auto timings work when it retrains a few times. Drops from seven. So this is. Let me just make this point really quickly. Uh, when I was talking about memory timings being kind of all over the place and impacting results, this is one of the things we were talking about where. Going from 700 to 374 can impact like a time spy extreme score, something really sensitive to memory, by a couple percentage points. So, uh, so that's a that's a big jump. But anyway, we were stable here at 240 on this memory previously, I think, with the 8086K OC. Um, I think I want to apply that new BIOS because it does stabilize a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna say we do that, but maybe, maybe for the next uh, live stream with an ice bucket or something too. I need to catch up on chats. Linus has a dragon now. Yes, I saw that. I saw it. Yeah, we have some. We have some small ones. We don't have a door big enough like Linus. We don't have a... He's got like... Had to bring in a bay door and move everything around. <laughs> uh, just reading... Catch up on chat for a second. Don't get your hair stuck in the fan, yes. There's a very... Very large... Uh, fans and a lot of them on a 540 radiator. Okay, let me blast through a bunch of these super chats. I really need to catch up on these. Let's do that. Uh, we had junk food reviews, $10. Hey, Steve, what does it mean if you have an overclock that makes it through gaming and all the normal benchmarks stress is just fine, but you get the watchdog error randomly while sitting at desktop? Um, we've had that. We had that recently on our production machine. It can happen randomly, seemingly. It can happen with... Uh, when did it happen most recently for us? When we were rendering something. So typically things like increasing the voltage can help stabilize their um, memory. Uh, memory timings have been a problem as well that have triggered that for us. But give the voltage a bit of a bump, see if it goes away, and then play around from there. 
PC World, we read that one. Keep up the good work, Steve. Thank you very much. We read that ages ago at this point. About an hour behind on these. Let me get through all these. Jeff Evers, $2. Can you talk about pre-order delays? Thanks. Um, yeah, so a couple of you have reported that you pre-ordered this CPU and the 2080 Ti's and you haven't gotten them yet. And uh, that's kind of crazy to me. I mean, the 900K makes sense, but they should have at least shipped it today. So I don't know, I don't know what there is to talk about. Like, it's... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's I, here's what I'll talk about this. The problem I have with it is like the 8700K where the product launches and there's enough available that people can kind of buy it and you can justify the reviews and the presence of the reviews and then it just vanishes for months. Like it's a pay for launch basically. Uh, I find those two very annoying and it's, I feel like they're typically used to steal the thunder away from a competitor more so than they are to actually drive the product to launch and success. Michael Cianchioli, $5. GN overclocking greater than WAN show and Linus eating beef jerky. <laughs> well, thank you. We appreciate your opinion. Uh, Sevilla Say, $2. Any info on Amazon pre order? My 900K hasn't shipped yet. No info. I'm sorry. I do not know anything about them, about the pre orders. Joey Goodwin, $5. Love the content. I was 6600K and have been looking at the 8700K or 2700X and now 9700K. Would love to hear your opinion. I play games and multitask. Okay, so you've got a 6600K, which if I remember correctly, correctly is an i5, and quite an, uh, an aging one at this point. So you're looking at an 8700, 2700X, or 9700K. I'm going to say, I haven't tested it yet, but I'm going to say pass on the 9700K. Let's just, let's just do that now. It's, uh, it's an odd part. Eight cores, eight threads. Um, I, I would, you say you play games and multitask. I don't know what multitask means to you. A lot of people think that multitasking means they have Discord open and YouTube uh, and they listen to music and they play a game. That's not really multitasking. That's trivial for a CPU to handle. So if you do some more serious multitasking, like maybe you're using, uh, maybe you have a turn-based game open kind of on one monitor and then you have like giant Excel sheets on another one that are running crunching formulas or um, some kind of database management on one monitor, you know, some kind of game on the other. I don't know, if you play EVE Online, that's basically a giant spreadsheet simulator anyway. So uh, stuff like that, live streaming, that's the more serious types of multitasking where the thread benefit will matter. And uh, in that regard, an 8700K is a big jump for you from a 6600K in terms of gaming performance. But a 2700X, actually a 2700, and then spend a, an hour overclocking it, if you don't know what you're doing, it should take about an hour. 2700 is what? $250? So you could save like a little over 100 bucks. And if that money is better spent to you elsewhere and you don't have high refresh rate requirements, the 2700 or overclocked X is the same, uh, is sufficient for gaming without super high refresh requirements. And you still get your multitasking needs accomplished. Uh, the 8700K is a great chip. We can recommend it firmly for people who need that class of IPC, need that frequency. Uh, I would say be aware of your applications and what they prefer between frequency and threads. Things like Adobe Premiere, you can throw a lot of threads at it, like with the 7980XE, but we get better rendering performance with an IGP and a consumer desktop CPU. So be aware of the applications uh, you use and what they want. Sabishi Oto, $2. Test the IMC. Want to see 4133 to 4200, 121212, 12, 12, 1T. This memory won't do 12. Um, we do need to test the IMC. Let me check with Buildzoid on that. We'll do another stream with an ice bucket or something, too. And uh, after I consult with Buildzoid a bit, maybe Der Bauer, and learn more about what I need to do on this platform for memory, we'll come back to it with a, a bigger stream with crazier cooling. Data file, $5. Tell him. Nice, oh, this is about Linus. Tell him, nice dinosaur, bro. It'll trigger him because of an argument about the dragon with his wife. I think I did catch that in the stream. Antrock, SEK50, are you thinking about lapping the chip in a future video? I'm sure you saw Romans. Uh, no, we are not planning to, but I might sand it a bit because it's got some, some uh, I don't know, it's not perfectly smooth, that bothers me. So I guess that is kind of lapping it. I don't know, we'll see. Let's stick with the IHS for now. 
Uh, Rolling Rock, two dollars plus one on Tally Linus. Nice dinosaur man. I guess I missed that one. Five dollars. RJ VR6. I finally decided to overclock my 4790K after years of owning it. Thank you for the inspiration. Glad to hear. Hope you have fun doing that. The 4790K was a good overclocker and had that upgraded thermal paste on the, the 4770. Are you okay? Five dollars. Would the average person with a non-D loaded 9900K and a 240 or 360 see anything over five gigahertz? Yes. Um, we did 5.2 all core on a 280 CLC Kraken X62. So yes, absolutely. Uh, Steve with three E's, Walton, 999. If you had the bandwidth and budget to live stream in 4K, what setup would you run? Also, what are you using to stream right now? The problem I have with streaming in 4K is more on what happens for the viewer? Like, I don't know. I think YouTube actually does process it down to 1080 and lower bit rates. Um, I know Twitch has problems with streaming at too high of a bit rate, but we could stream in 4K. We do have the bandwidth and we do have the parts. We just don't because this seems to work well and I'm hesitant to push it if it's unnecessary because I, I don't know what happens on the viewer side. What are you using to stream though? We're using a 1950X right now to stream and OBS. Uh, $10, Eric Jackson, to help with the LTT expenses. David Conley, $5. I'm very interested in computer engineering. If I go into it, I would get a master's. I'd love to work at AMD, Intel, or NVIDIA making new products. I think this is referring to earlier when I was talking about um, uh, answering that other question. So, I, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, say, uh, I'll say this, I guess. Try to figure out if there's some area you would like to specialize in, because computer engineering is a very broad term. So like, are you talking electrical? Are you talking like electromagnetic signal integrity engineering or something like that? Um, AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA are certainly high targets. There are lots of other good companies too that you could start at. Uh, and I would also say, you know, I, I don't know. I guess go into it with, with some research on what aspects of computer engineering do you like? Because I hear computer engineering and it doesn't mean a whole lot to me in this industry. Because it's so broad. Of course, still very valuable. But um, yeah, Look, do, do, uh, do some looking around on the options because there's a lot of really cool fields within computer engineering too. The Black Knight, $5. Are you going to redo the PT test with proper methodology? We did our own review and I would refer you to that. I don't need to redo their testing because we trust our own. Uh, GAK Tian, 64, $7. If it's crashing but not overheating, it probably needs more voltage. Uh, yes, I don't, I'm not sure what the point of that <laughs> comment was. Uh, <laughs> I guess it was a while ago, maybe I missed something. H0881750, Debra got negative, uh, wait, what? Negative 4C for D, oh, minus, as in like a reduction of 4 degrees Celsius on Ryzen. What was your delta on Ryzen? We didn't delit Ryzen. Uh, and we'll talk about the Delta with liquid metal on the 9900K in an upcoming video. Town, $5. I'm just trying to get through all the super chats here. We're almost done. Almost through all of them, I think. Oh, there's more coming in. But we're getting through them pretty quickly here. Where'd that one go? There we go. $5 from Town. Given that the 9900K PCB is now thicker, will you try to direct die cool it? I would love to. Uh, if I can get a kit from Roman, then yes. Sweet Cuba, $5. Much love from Miami, Steve. I wanted to ask, do you have a DLID video and overclocking tutorial? Yes, we do have uh, DLID videos. Do you have 5XL shirts as well? I'm a big dude, LOL. Uh, yes, I think we do. We should for the cotton designs of maybe like the, the um, anniversary design, we might have a 5X. We do try to stock a couple of them every print run we do, so keep an eye out. Alexander the Greatest, $5. Do you think I can get stable 5 gigahertz with an NZXT X72 and MSI Godlike C390? Yes. With a 9900K, I'm assuming yes, definitely. That should be trivial. Adam Schumann, senior, $5. Ordered and received my large teardown crystal. How do I make it rotate like yours? So on the, on the order page, it says it doesn't rotate. Um, it is a stationary base because the rotation thing is just for display on the set. It's a separate, we bought it separately. Uh, Carlos Pissero, Jr., $20. Steve Conton is great, favorite channel. Thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, Leon Lion, Lionheart, $2. 6700K versus 8700K worth upgrading. Apparently, I need to do this content. Uh, we tested the 4790K. Take a look at those results. Take a look at the 8700K. 
it's the same kind of idea. A little bit of a difference with the 6700K, but not too much. Mustangs by Matt. I have that same case, the uh, Dynamic. Waiting on my 9900K to ship before I build. Very interested to see what fan and cooling setup you go with. Um, negative or positive pressure AIO. I'm probably going to do an open loop for my production machine just for fun because it's, uh, I don't know, I, I'm going to need to rebuild the system in a year anyway to drain the loop and I'm going to want to replace the CPU. So it seems like it'll be fun to do. We got uh, Remy Andre, $10. Hello, Steve. How much would I have to donate to Patreon in order to pay for a video tutorial on how to apply liquid metal to a Vega 64 liquid? I will uh, advise that you keep the money and don't apply liquid metal to graphics cards. It's not worth it. It's ready direct eye contact. Just put good paste on there. You'll be fine. It's a lot of extra work to do liquid metal. There's some risk involved. Um, it's already direct eye contact. It's honestly just really not worth it. Uh, $1 from Mateo. Thank you. No message. Mooney13, $49.99. Wow, thank you, Mooney. I wish I had seen your video asking for someone to send an Evolve X before I built mine. Are you still planning on testing one? I uh, love your videos and work ethic. Thank you. Your no BS approach. Uh, much love and good luck. Thank you. So, yes, we the review was shot today. Um, we need to do the intro and outro right after the stream, and then it'll be done. I will go up shortly. Jack Reitman, $10. I think Intel engineers are on suicide watch today. They told us they wanted solder. Why can't we win? I'm, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure someone at Intel is probably going, why can't we win? I think you're probably right. Uh, the solder is definitely a massive improvement. So we're giving them credit there. Massive improvement. Arctic Nerd, $20. Almost through the super chats. I enjoyed your chiller overclocking in your last stream. What would happen if you ran the same principle in freezing temperatures outdoors? Your name, Arctic Nerd, is very fitting, uh, such as in a place where it gets minus 60 degrees, even submerging into an iced lake. Um, so same idea, same exact idea. Actually, yeah, I mean, who did it, Joker? I think Joker did a video, like outside when it was snowing once. Um, yeah, so GPU boost will increase the frequency as, it's, as the core temperature decreases. So it will boost higher. We observed that in our testing with the ice bucket. If you do it in negative 60 outside, like negative 60C or something, uh, or I'm assuming you're saying negative 60F, but whatever. Uh, if you do it, same thing outside. It, it's the same idea. It's just, I guess, ambience lower, so condensation is less of a concern. So it probably makes it easier in that regard. Um, yes, going to the literal Arctic would make overclocking a lot easier in that regard. JM, $20, Maximus 10 Hero AC, delitted 8700K, 10 ATI, Intel M2, 600P, 512 gigabyte SSD. Um, mostly used as a toy and some homework, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, C++ coding. For the next upgrade, should I go 9900K or Samsung 970 Evo M2, one terabyte SSD? What was your CPU? 8700K. Yeah, I, I always wish I could give a really firm answer to these questions, but there are too many variables, so I'll give you a few answers. Uh, are you running into issues where opening, accessing files, um, saving files is slowing you down? Because if you're seeing issues where you're getting file access delays, then an SSD upgrade is probably where you want to go. If you're spending like 10 minutes opening a giant project file or something with a lot of parts in it in SOLIDWORKS. If that's not a problem, and you have no access time limitations, you don't feel like storage, like the latency of opening things, of saving things, is slowing you down, then uh, I guess spend the budget elsewhere, like a CPU, because you'll always get more improvement there most of the time. Uh, you will in this case. Jeff Gilbert, $5, finally found a live stream. Shout out from New Zealand. Uh, question, when are you going to upgrade your personal PC, and what would you upgrade to? I'm not going to upgrade my system at home anytime soon. Um, it's garbage, but it works. Uh, I'm going to build a production system here. So what I'm going to do is pull a 6800K, because we're not going to use it again. Uh, so we're going to pull a 6800K. We're going to pull an X99 Deluxe ASUS motherboard and uh, whatever RAM I can find. And I think that's we'll probably call it a day there. Do some overclocking, put it under an open loop. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to working with a dynamic case for that from Leon Lee. Swing Life Away, 92. $5. Random question. Where did the 10XX modded BIOS come from? 
the one that acts similar to a shunt mod. I wish there was one for the newer Titan XP. You can find them on overclock.net. That is a great resource for finding modded V BIOSes with uh, higher power limits. Sabishi Odo, five dollars. Let's see DDR4 4200 uh, 1211 11 28 220 CR1. That's a really specific request. <laughs> Not on this kit of memory. Uh, Joe Sutinen, shout out to the GN staff. You all do an amazing job. And I speak for the loyal GN fan base when I say you do awesome work and we love you. Thank you very much, Joe Sutinen. Brandon Krauk, $10. Take my money because Intel clearly doesn't want it. Ooh, ouch. Ouch, Intel. Uh, your videos are awesome. Thank you very much. I think we're almost through these super chats. Stop sending super chats. Try to get through them all. Um, try to get through them all so we can close out. Uh, and we got some store orders too. I should shout one or two of these out. <coughs> but uh, Andrew from New York purchased one of the foil graph logo shirts. That's one that I'm wearing today. Not literally this one, but you get the idea. Uh, those are selling through pretty quickly, actually. Uh, these will probably sell out in a similar amount of time to the last ones within two weeks, I would suspect. Next, uh, next super chat was Night Center. How tight do you screw down water cooler pump screws onto the CPU? NZXT Crack and X62. Not that tight. If you tighten the coolers too much on the socket, you might trip a pressure sensor and it will fail to boot. Um, hand tight is the answer. Like just tighten. It's a it's a giant thumb screw. Just use your fingers to tighten it until you can't anymore. It should be fine. Unless you have like massive finger muscles, in which case be careful, I guess. Um, they probably have a torque spec, but if you just go hand tight, you'll, you'll be okay. It does not need to be that tight. Punky Zero, $10. Any recommendations for open test benches? I uh, love the content. Yes, yeah, so we are working, we will be working with soon, op uh, open bench table pretty soon. They make a good one. It's expensive, it's small, it's pretty portable. So that's got some upsides. Uh, the Thermal Tech Core P3 is a good cheap one for like a hundred bucks, and you could turn it into a test bench by removing the feet or standing it up if you want vertical. Uh, Gordon Clare, five dollars. Steve, if you turn up the switching frequency on the chokes, it should help a lot. Thank you for the information. I'll talk with Bill Zoid about that and all the other ideas. Um, a Vernachek, one dollar. Thank you. It burns when internet protocol. Five dollars. I will say I laugh when I hear someone reads this name out. Well worth the five dollars. So uh, that is from it burns when I pee. It, it burns when internet protocol sent that in. Thank you, it burns when I pee. Uh, to Geek Koya, $5. I always tune in for your man locks. Love the channel, thank you. James W, $5. Would it be acceptable for an NC local to come join you for your Friday OC? Sorry, no, no visitors. Um, thank you for the donation though. Uh, cool to see people are local. Maybe we'll do a meetup someday instead. Hef Williams, $20. I have a 9900K arriving on Wednesday, currently running Z3, Z370 godlike. Would you bother upgrading the motherboard or stick with this? See how it works first. If you already have it coming in, just see how it goes. And if you really don't like it, if it's limiting you, then upgrade. But you can probably save some money if you don't. Phobiarg, what's cheap H uh, heatsink that can cool a 5.0 OC 9900K? Um, what was that Be Quiet one? We, uh, the Dark Rock Pro 4, the Dark Rock 4, Dark Rock 4. It's not too expensive. That could handle it. I don't know about 5.0. Yeah, 5.0. Should be able to do that. Should be able to do that for sure. Uh, Martin, $5. Thanks for answering. I thought you missed my chat from an hour ago. Yeah, sorry. With the size of the 20X cards, do you think we will see a mini card from Zotac? They like to make them. Maybe a mini 2070 first. Uh, VRM takes space on the higher end ones. Jason Kristoff, we're almost through these super chats. 999, hey Steve, bought a, uh, I'm gonna cut off the super chats here too, 10, 10 p.m. Uh, bought a, an X370 ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero for first gen Ryzen, planning on upgrading to gen 2 Ryzen, but keeping this board, uh, but keeping the board, is this a good idea? Yeah, that's fine, that's a good board. I have no problem with that. Uh, Tarfiv, two dollars. Any chance you'll make a collared shirt? It's always a chance. No current plans though. Uh, Dartagnan Steel, five dollars. Will the 9900K have enough PCIe lanes for a dual GPU setup? Yeah, um, by eight by eight. Ideally, you get a PLX chip, but most of the boards don't have that. You run by eight by eight. Isogen, two dollars. Can you review SwiftTech Drive X3AO? No current plans. I'm not actually sure what that one is. 
Dixon Salter, please tell Andrew he has an ice cube in a reservoir and what CPU is this? You heard him. Andrew says, <laughs> uh, Fee, 499, how to dream I pitched you my favorite topic, consumers' ability to believe they're superhuman being things, uh, a la res, I can see 8K, it requires size and distance. Yes, 8K is something that will matter with very large screens at certain distances. Jonathan, oh nice, we're, we're almost to the bottom of these. Thank you though for sending them in. Uh, we're gonna end with Ken Motley. Jonathan Rosalia, $2, what's your favorite 27 inch monitor and why? I don't have a favorite um, because I just use whatever we have. I'm not a, not a good person for monitors. This one's pretty good. It's a 144 hertz Asus one. I think it's old by today's standards. Uh, what is it called? MG279Q. So we've liked it. It's reliable. I don't know. It seems fine. <laughs> I don't really have serious monitor preferences. Thought Fix, 1337. Thank you for keeping the elite alive. Still want to buy your Skull Canyon water block from you. Um, Moonlight Mods, contact them. They'll make one for you probably. Contact Moonlight Mods. They're the former Danger Den guys. Oh wait, you said Skull Canyon, not Hades. Skull Canyon. Is that, I don't even remember what Skull Canyon is. I was thinking, oh it is, yeah, I got it right. Okay, yeah, yeah, Moonlight Mods. Contact them, they made the one that we have. Elite Truck Repairs, $10. Hey Steve, I have a 1070 Ti and a 7700K, but I'm still experiencing some shoppiness, choppiness in my gaming. I have a cheap Gigabyte B250M. Will upgrading the motherboard help? Yes. Yes, uh, and maybe the OS while you're at it, just in case. Riley Keir, $5. So I asked a question last to ask GN. LLC has temperature control on Skylake non-K 6400OC. Um, what is the question? So I, LLC has temperature control, I think is the question. LLC 7 runs up to 1.38 under load. Use low line calibration to hold the voltages steady at the places you want them to be, and you can undershoot if you're not overclocking, I guess. I don't know if that answers your question. Um, can you explain what artifacting is? Uh, yeah, if I had, I don't know, we could maybe demo it. Let me see if I can just demo it. That'd be pretty easy if, if I can get this. Um, let's just set this up to boot. Should be pretty easy to demo. So let's just reset to optimize defaults. That is so much quieter. And um, I'm just going to push the, the memory frequency on the video card until it artifacts. Artifacting, you'll see like a lot of multicolored flickering, like a lot of purple and red and yellow. Um, in Time Spy Extreme's GT2, that's a really good way to test it. It'll flicker like crazy because it's HBM intensive, or not HBM, it's memory intensive, excuse me. And so as you push the memory frequency to places where it is no longer stable, you'll see that artifacting, which is that multicolored flickering. Uh, sometimes you'll get like a crosshatch, like black bars um, shown through. Sometimes you'll get a lot of really aggressive flickering of the colors. So it just, it doesn't mean necessarily that there's any physical damage to the hardware, you don't have to worry. Uh, it can indicate physical damage, but typically what it means is that you've just pushed the memory frequency to a point where it's not stable. It's not necessarily hurting it, it's just not stable. And that's GPU memory frequency to be clear. I don't know if I, I probably don't have any video overclocking software on here. You know what, let's, uh, let's just open it up. Um, Time Spy Extreme Artifacting. Yeah, here we go. There you go. This is a really good example. This is from Stijan Stevens on YouTube. Here's your example. So this is a good example. Can you see that screen okay? It seems kind of dark. Let me paste it in chat. I'll paste it in chat. This is an example of artifacting though. Uh, I'm just going to paste that in chat. And it is from memory frequency often being too high. Someone said, what is a teardown cube earlier? Uh, we have one on the desk here. Let me just paste that again. There you go. Okay. Someone's talking about no NV link 16 by 16 on the god like that is correct. You'd be eight by eight. Uh, for those asking what's the teardown cube, that's what it is. It's the GN logo with a, um, 3D laser engraved design in it, and it has different components. So you can see like screws, there's um, 
fake VRM components, stuff like that. Pretty, pretty damn cool. That's on our store, store.gearinsexus.net, for the person asking about it. So it's got like PCIe slots and chokes and inductor, or well, same thing, but uh, MOSFETs, all that stuff in there. Anyway, um, <coughs> so yeah, the uh, that answers the artifacting question. We have a couple more. I said we'd stop at, where are you? Kin Motley, we're almost there, a couple away. Um, Fragger, 56, $5. What do you think of other reviewers maxing out at five gigahertz on their 9900K samples on water? Intel binning strikes again. Five gigahertz is nothing. So if that's the best Intel can send as golden samples, and that's really bad. Because like it does 5G on one core out of the box. If you can't do five gigahertz all core without any effort, you're doing something wrong. Um, no, it should, 9900Ks should for sure do five. I don't know, maybe it depends on the software they're testing, but we did 5.2, no problem. We did 5.3 here today, sort of 5.4, but it wasn't stable. So I don't know, five gigahertz is not, and that was on an X62, by the way. So 5.3 was on this big cooler, but 5.2 was on a 280 CLC. Um, unless you mean bad binning, maybe that was it. Raiden54, $2, thanks for the streams, thank you for watching. Uh, PC World said, it was fun, but pizza calls, good luck hitting 6 gigahertz. We are definitely not going to hit 6 gigahertz. Uh, Stanley Renz, $10, hey Steve, I have 650 watt PSU and I run a 10 ATI with 240 AIO, GPU cooler, um, all the RGB I can handle is 650 watts enough for an 8700K and a 1080 Ti. Uh, yes, if they're not severely overclocked, yes. Guido Saducci, $2. Did you say send more Super Chats? No. Kin Motley, $20. Thanks for all your excellent work. Have a pizza on me. Thank you, Kin Motley. There are four more. I am stopping after these four. I said I'd stop at the last one. Frank Laturco, $2. What tastes better, liquid metal or thermal paste? OK. I see how it is. <laughs> I wanted to do a couple more to be nice. Uh, I would not advise tasting either of them, especially liquid metal. Uh, Gorillas, $10. Hey, Steve, I have 7700K Z270 formula. Do you think I should upgrade to a 9900K um, or upgrade my 1080 Ti to a 2080 Ti? I wouldn't recommend upgrading to a 2080 Ti unless you like absolutely need to have the best and that's all that matters to you. If you're happy with it, just keep it. It's fine. 1080 Ti is a good card. There's nothing wrong with still using that card. We would recommend buying it over most of the modern cards. Uh, so like I said, two more. Jonathan Rosalia, 1050 Ti overclocking battle of the bottom. That would be kind of fun. Although it'd be very limited, very fast. It'd be like a five minute stream. Ben Grogan, $10, posted this in Patreon with a related link uh, a day or two ago. Wow, this, WoW is finally updating to use multi-core using chunking. What? Black magic ways besides this are used, and how do they work? I'm not sure I understand the question. How is oh World of Warcraft? Wow, the second W wasn't capitalized. It threw me off. Wow is finally updating to use multi-core. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything about how World of Warcraft is programmed, unfortunately. Uh, anyway. So that's it for the Super Chats. Thank you. Like I said, one of the best ways to support us has been through the store. Thank you to all of you who purchased stuff on the store. We really appreciate it. These will still be there for a little while. Uh, once we saw it, they're gone. The new Graph logo foil shirt. But they, they stuck around for about two weeks last time, two and a half. So hopefully it sticks around again. But pick them up early if you definitely want one because they will sell out and we're not restocking them. As for the overclocking, I got to 5.3. So we did 5.3, pretty stable in Cinebench, in TimeSpy. We hit our TimeSpy goal, um, actually beat it by quite a bit. And Cinebench, I still have to go back for that one. I need to consult with Buildzoid and maybe Roman to update my knowledge on overclocking with this platform because they've trained me pretty well, as has Vince, i.e. Kingpin. Uh, they've trained me well on X299, but this is a bit different. So I need to learn the voltages for this one. And, um, and we'll revisit it in maybe a week or so and talk about uh, putting this thing under an ice bucket as well or something like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll have some fun with it. So stay tuned as always. Subscribe for more. Thank you for watching. And I will see you all next time.